everybody. Welcome to episode 48 of the Intermission Podcast, the show where f- two film graduates discuss classic, iconic, and obscure films. From times gone by, we're your hosts, Oscar W. Fitch. Yeah. And I am the tastiest washing on liquid you ever drank. That sounds deadly. Yeah, well, that's me. I don't know what about deadly. I don't think you're deadly. Deadly 60, mate. Steve Batchel. You're deadly 60? You are, yeah? Did you say? I didn't say I'm deadly 16. So I said 60. I said 60. Oh, oh good. I didn't bring up 16. Whoa, 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 whoa. Still legal. But with but, but, but. Uh, Okay. Sorry. Do I start again? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Because that's a fucking <laughs> terrible turn for early dolls. <laughs> Apologies, everybody. That was awful. I did so- say 60. No, as in I the he- Steve Batchel show. And I did hear 60 as well. Well, that's good then. And I did say 60 as well. Yeah, good. I'm so glad the, you did. So what's the I issue? Should, I should fucking hope so. <laughs> so what's the issue? Jesus. What's the problem? How are you doing, Robin? Awful. Well, I, I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Jesus. Yeah, good, good. I feel yeah. really uncomfortable now. Well, I'm fine, yeah. I, I've just fi- I've spent like an hour fixing my radiator. Yeah, what, what happened there? Oh, fucking bastard. It was um, just popping off. What, as in, like, from the wall? It was just coming off? No, no, the, um, you know, the little dial that you turn? Yeah. To be like, to be like I want it um, heat level five. Yeah. It just fucking came off. So it was stuck, <laughs> it had been stuck on five all day whilst I've been out. So it's been just so I've come home and it's just like, it's literally like a greenhouse. I'm so warm. <sighs> if I could be doing this podcast shirtless, I would. Um, da, 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 I'm not doing that. Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, so I was googling how you fix it. Uh, um, the answer is just push it back on. Oh. If, anyone's, if anyone else, ever, if anyone ever has to do that, then that's that's how you do it. So you just push just it put, back on. Do just you? push it back on you. Yeah. I actually um, might turn into a. Ch- I'm gonna change into a t-shirt. Are you not wearing any, a t-shirt under that? No, you know this. I don't wear t-shirts under my jumpers. I'm a moron well i'll take my microphone with me so you can still we can still discuss things like films and such uh like the, the films and such i haven't watched anything you've not watched anything ever no you <laughs> tell me you've you've never watched a single film for this podcast shock twist i bullshit my entire I... way through 48 episodes <laughs> there is um there's two episodes of this podcast where i didn't watch the film that's and i'll leave it I'll leave it to the fans to discuss which ones they could possibly be. I think you told me already. Oh, really? I can't remember which ones. I, I think you said you started or like you skimmed through them. Yeah. Which ones were they? I'm not, I'm not saying. It's a, it's, a, it's a mystery. I'd like people to go back through the episodes and try and figure out which ones does he seem like he has no idea what he's talking about. Oh, that's, that's more than oh, two, mate. That's, yeah, it's most of them, yeah. <laughs> Most of the episodes. Was one of them Shawshank Redemption? No, I'd seen Shawshank Redemption. For that episode? Yeah. I'll watch Shawshank again. All right. There was one this season, though. The Big Boss? No, you found the Big Boss. I found the Big Boss. I'm not saying. The General? No, stop asking me. So it was goodness, Modern Times, then? Goodness gracious. No, I watched Modern Times. That, that's the only four in this season, Robbie. Yeah, well, I lied about one, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it was the big boss. Um, All right. Well, that, you say whichever one you want. Think that, that, that's my bet. Well, that's my that's my assumption. I have all four of them. Yeah. I thought I. I'm you get. You up as much as I can so that I can still hear you when I've got my headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> can you still hear me, Robbie? Yes. Well, I was my my original point was like I haven't really been watching many films if you follow me on letterboxd i'm not really uh i haven't really i'm not i have been regularly logging stuff lately the last film i watched though i uh, i sat with uh sat with reese bruce on a lounging spring night and we uh and we stuck on steve jobs because we thought fuck it it's a class film good movie it's a really good yeah. film really really good film oh yeah man both appreciated every element of that film it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a good one. You know, yeah, I love the social network. Social network is better than Steve Jobs. But you know what? Mm. I think people need to go back and watch Steve Jobs more. Yeah, it's good. I like more it. O- more often. I mean, not more, not more than social network. I just mean more what often I've, in general. 
What have I seen recently? Let me have a look. I'll go on my letterbox. I've been doing letterboxed. Have you? Have you actually got back in the letterboxed? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I was going to say that. I'm sure I, feel like I've seen... I've, I feel like I've done a few. Hmm. I watched the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Th- three stars. Shazam yeah. I watched. Three stars. As in what? The Shazam 2? Yeah. Um, saw Guardians. It's very good. Guardians. Saw the new Evil Dead. Didn't like it. Did not like it at all. Sorry, everyone. Um, because everyone in the world seems to love it, and we I talk- just we talked about it briefly. It's fine. Yeah, I just am not a fan. I watched Fast X. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh my god! I'm debating whether I give that much of a shit to like keep up to date with them now. I, I do you know what I mean? Do, I, I could just tell you what happens. No, <laughs> no I'm not, do you know why? Because I don't even because I don't even care that much to find out. Do you uh, know what okay. I mean? Like it's, can, it's, I, can I tell you what the post credit scene is? Because that was crazy. I've heard apparently it's mad. What is it? It's the fucking rock. He's back! He's what? back! <laughs> After all this shit! He shows, he, shows up, he's got, he shows up, he's got his, his silly little goatee back on. He's as if the rock's back. Incredible. He's like, because um, I think you know Jason Momoa is he's playing the Joker, and he's uh, all like, uh, yeah, yeah. he's all like, oh, you all wronged me or whatever. And then the post credits is like him uh, leaving a message for the Rock, being like, "You were responsible for killing my dad or whatever." Uh, right, okay. And then you you don't see who the face is because he's got like tactical gear in it, and he's like. He takes the mask off and it's the rock and he's like, I'm going to get that son, bitch. Oh, hell yeah, man. So, yeah, pretty good. Rock yeah. to the next one, I guess. You know what? You got you got me excited about watching Fast X. Then. You haven't. You haven't got me excited about watching Fast X. <laughs> I got you excited about watching Fast X Part 2. Fast 10, your seatbelts again. Fast 10, your seatbelts one more time, please. It, it should be Fast 10, your seatbelts. Fast 10, your seatbelts again, please. And then the third one that they're now doing is once more for the people in the back, fast turn your seatbelts. <laughs> I think should be the, the possi- titles of that trilogy. What, what could this one possibly be? Like, what could they, this, like, they, they what did could they fast, do? They did, fa- no, like, for the name wise, like, Fast X. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, what, is it just going to be Furious 11? I've, I've, <laughs> we just gonna... heard, well, no, because there's, ne- there's never been um, a carry on of being like, it's this, and this is the naming convention. There's never been two the same. No, so I'm, no, Fast Five. Fast Five, but Fast X is like Roman numerals. We've never had no Roman numerals before. Yeah, no, we haven't. We haven't, yeah. You know, so I don't know. It'll be like, maybe it just gets rid of the Fs. Aston Urius. <laughs> Ele- Eleven. <laughs> maybe yeah, it's just it, Fs. Maybe it's f- Eleven. Because they did a smart Double one. Because they did a smart one, the eighth one. It was Fate of the Furious. But it was mm. F8 of the Furious. Yeah. So that's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the Magnificent yeah, Furious. I don't know. I don't fucking the, know. You the know. Magnificent Furious. Wow. Faster and Furious, sir. The Fury. The, the Fastest Furious. The, fa- the f- Fury. The f- fu- fury of the Fast. F- fastest Fury. Um, Sounds like a Bruce Lee film. That's pretty good. F- um. It's a fist of fury, faster fury, faster fury. That's good. Yeah. This this is the oh, un- yeah. this is the this is the universal pitch and. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just they have like, all of the, they have all of all of the letters all, all of the letters of the original title and they're just throwing fucking darts at them to see which ones they're gonna put in. <laughs> it's it's like well that one sounds like a Bruce Lee from oh it's a fist of fury, faster fury. It's like oh Phil Everyone's you got like, it Whoa. you got <laughs> yeah. Good job, Johnson. So how do we? So how do we get that? So what do we do now? I was like, oh no, who's big? Donnie Yen, get him in there. Get it. Get yeah, in the get fight. Donnie Yen. No, just get just get Han to do it. No, but get Donnie Yen to come in to fight no, Han. Okay. Oh yeah, that's good. Was yeah, Han I'm in? Sold. Was Han in Fast X? Oh boy, was he in Fast X? Uh, okay. Was he better he, than? He'd say. In, was he better in in Fast X than he was in Fate? Because it's not Fate. He, F- 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 Nine. F- nine. Um, probably he takes magic mushrooms at one point in a muffin. Oh. Um, but but it wears off. He, he so he 
He he starts to he eats a bit of a muffin, starts to hallucinate, and then puts the muffin down, and then is fine for right. the rest of the sequence. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like like as if that's what it is. If you if you go to have an edible and then you're like, actually, I won't have the rest of this. It goes. And then no, you're fine. Right, well, 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 you're fine then. <laughs> no, it works. Yeah. Nah, well, it's a, it's a bad movie. Was it, was it better than Fnine? Yes, but only Fnine... because it's fucking ridiculous. Oh well, I might like it then, because 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 the thing with Fnine, it was like they kind of didn't become ridiculous. They were just kind of oh, it's a bit like, you know, it was weird. Yeah. Fnine was Fnine was weirdly dull. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, there's a weird um, hey, this character's still alive when you didn't think they were still alive thing. Right. So that that sucks. It makes no sense. But, I, I mean, it's not explained in this movie. They just show up in the last scene, and it's like, what? All right. <laughs> you you, you died another... four movies ago. I got another one. Oh, yeah, another go on. title. Uh, since this one... If they are going to do the Roman numerals, this would be XI, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. this one could you... You know, if, and if you put, like, F-X-I, Fexy. Fexy. I like that. Um... And then the and, oh, and then the third and then the third one in this trilogy could be um, mm-hmm. can be twelve angry cars. Twelve angry cars is twelve, 12 furious, furious men. Furious twelve can. furious men. <laughs> twelve furious men. We did it. We did it. That's everyone. it. Well we done, everyone. It. That's Either perfect. Fast, fast of fury is the eleventh one. Yeah. Hashtag fexy, and then um, yeah, and then and then twelve furious men. It's like the perfect. God. And Michelle Rodriguez, it says in Mich- the tiny text. <laughs> next to it. And Michelle Rodriguez. Oh yeah, because Gal Gadot died, didn't she? Or is she the one yeah. that came back? She's the one that came <laughs> back, baby. She fe- she fell out of a plane in six. She did. At the oh, end she of this did. One. Boy, she did. Uh, at the at the end of this one, uh, Michelle Rodriguez and Charlie Theron have been on their little mission in the snow or whatever, and they they get out of the facility. And then a submarine just raises out of the ice and Gal Gadot <laughs> sticks her head out of the hatch and is like, hello, it's me, I'm alive. And that's oh, all well, that, that we see of her. Oh, well, that negates all of Han's grieving. Yeah. Well. It's like maybe it's like maybe she's working for Charlize Theron. So I don't fucking... I don't oh. care. Why am I... Why yeah, don't, I don't care. <laughs> ask, ask me when I've seen Spider-Man next week and I'll be, I'll be more excited. Well, I'll, I'll see, I'm seeing that this Sunday, so... Yeah, I'm seeing that Saturday. Yeah. I need to message Anna Bant, see if I can get free tickets. All right. Oh, well. Um, Look at me with my insider knowledge. And uh, should, we, should we shuffle on into what we're talking oh, yeah, about? Oh, po- yeah, let's do the podcast. Fuck it. Yeah, so that, <laughs> so that, so that was the... <laughs> uh, but before we get going, as always, everyone, yeah. there's time codes in the description below. Whether if you're mm-hmm. watching, obviously there's chapter marks on YouTube, but if you're listening on the podcast platforms, there's time codes. So you can see when we're talking about stuff and whatnot. Uh, also, social media links, Instagram, letterboxed. Instagram is where you can see all the updates and all that. Like when we have to impromptu uh, delay an episode and then shove another one in there, shove another video in, in its place. You can find that out yeah. on the Instagram as well. Um, well... Heard that, Robbie. Yeah, man. Was that your computer? Yeah, sorry, that was my... Um, it's giving me a notification about fucking nothing like it usually does. Why don't Virus I hear that, Robbie? Reputation. Why don't I hear that, Robbie? Isn't your I headphones why plugged in? My headphones are plugged in. Am I not coming out of your computer speakers? Notifications might be coming out of the regular um. speakers. Well, I'm curious. All I was right. just curious. I was just curious. I was just curious, Robbie. All right. All right. All right. I just didn't, I just didn't want to get, get the audio. I just didn't want to get the audio than hear me wanna, again. Do you want to get out of my fucking business? God, sync it properly and you'd probably bloody wouldn't be able to hear yourself, would you? That's Wee. not how it works, Robbie. That's not how it works. Got, <laughs> got him. That's not how it works at all. Um... Got him. And anyway, also, yeah, and also, and also in the description, as always, mental health links for any information and all that stuff yeah, boy. about it all. Uh, yeah, uh, keep, keep uh, if you if you or someone you know, someone that you love, is in a bit of a dark place. 
and you're not sure where to start, there's helpful links in the description below for all of that stuff. Whether you're in the UK or overseas, make sure to do that as well. You know, keep all that. Keep keep your mental health in check, everyone. Keep your mental health in check. Oh, Always yeah. do that. And with that being said, Robbie, shall we glide over into the film? I, I'll tell discussion. you what, I'd, bl- I'd bloody love to. Uh, we will we'll twirl over into this film and the film oh, that Jesus. we are talking <laughs> and the film that we'll talk about this week ladies and gentlemen is uh, the 1948 romantic drama The Red Shoes uh, the film was directed by Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger written by Powell and Pressburger it's based on the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen it's an interesting credit because is it um, uh, the film stars Anton Walbrook Marius Goran uh, Moira Shearer Leonide Massine, Robert Helpman, Esmond Knight, and Ludmilla Cherina. The plot of the film called IMDb is a young ballet dancer is torn between the man she loves and her pursuit to become a prima ballerina. A close the film holds it has a 97% on the tomato meter and an audience score of 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Also holds an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb. And it has a score of 4.3 out of 5 stars on Letterboxd, placing it at number 76 in their top 250 films of all time. Other accolades the film holds is that it was nominated for the Grand International Award at the Venice Film Festival. It was nominated and won one Golden Globe Award for Best Original Score for Brian Easdale. It was nominated for one BAFTA Award for Best British Film, and it was nominated for five Academy Awards for Best Film Editing for Reginald Mills, Best Writing Motion Picture Story for Emmerich Pressburger, and Best Picture. And it won two Academy Awards, including Best Music Score for Brian Easdale and Best Art Direction Colour for Hein Heckroth and Arthur Lawson. So... Sir, red shoes. Oh, my computer is loading. I think there you go. It's caught up. <laughs> what the hell is it loading? Oh, no, it was. I xed off on the word document. Then it was just like, oh, give it, give us a minute. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I did. So stuff. the red shoes. This is my second time watching this film. Um, uh, unlike most films within the emission, I haven't had time to rewatch this one. We wa- I watched it last week for a second time, and I haven't seen it in over a week. So. So that's it. So I had to like quickly skim through certain scenes earlier before coming here, just refresh myself. But I've I've seen this film twice now. Uh, to me personally, this is a film that I just think's quite outstanding. In all honesty, uh, it's in the same. You know, like how I said with Ron, like the Kira Kurosawa film mm. Ron. We talked about how like to me, like it's like one of these ones where it may not necessarily rank really high in my favorites, although it is quite a nice favorite of my for uh, for me uh but it's one of these ones where it's more of an objective appreciation where i look at it and go fucking hell that's just like one of the best films i've ever seen like from like a purely made standpoint like i think like it's one of these ones where on a technical level it's fucking quite outstanding and flawless i like i think the story has loads has nice layers to it and all that from a visual standpoint it's gorgeous and just the story and how like the story itself intertwines itself with the visual storytelling i think it's kind of like the perfect use of all of like every medium in the one and it's kind of like the only example that i can think of like the like there's no other medium that this story could have been made in other than a film like the way that this was told I can't imagine any other way other than film. And I think it's kind of like the perfect example of utilizing the medium of film to its fullest potential. Um, yeah, and I think, quite honestly, it's kind of a film that always baffles me that it was made in the 40s. It always baffles me when I see screenshots. So I'm like, fucking hell, that's like a film that like I would have at least put in like the late 50s, possibly. Maybe early 60s, on like a technical standpoint. Uh, so yeah, it's a film that I, th- I, I it's a, it's a film that I'm incredible. I'm always been incredibly impressed with, and that I admire a lot. And I think it's really fucking good. Robbie, you tell me your thing with him. Why you probably don't like it? 
Um, I watched it for the first time for this podcast, and it will be the last time because this was shit. <laughs> this fucking sucked. Oh, Jesus. I don't know, man. I, do, do you know what it was, right? Here's the thing. Here, here, here it is. So you said when you were when you were listing off its accolades and such things, you said based on the fairy tale, the red shoes. Yeah, it has no, it's not. Anderson, yeah, no, it isn't. But yeah, no, it's no, no, it's not. Um, you can't say that something is based on something when the the story is referenced as being a story in the movie. <laughs> that's not based on a fucking thing. That's that's just this thing is referenced in the thing. And it's like yeah. But, and just because it, um, ah, oh, the ending sucks so bad. Um, I see, right? Here's my thing with this. Here's my thing, man. Let me think for a second. Um, you know, ah, oh, Jesus, you know, when you were saying, uh, I've never sounded more defeated on this podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think I've, I think you probably have. <laughs> you know, when you were saying that. Um, you think this uses the medium of film to its fullest extent. Yeah. And why is there a whole 40 minute segment of just a theater show? Cause it's fuck. Cause it's not just a theater show, Robbie. First of all, it's like 18 minutes, 15, 18 minutes. Um, it's a but, while, <laughs> but, yeah, but it's not just a theater show because you don't get that level of like overlay. You can't do overlay and editing. You can't do transitions from different sets in theater. You can't like, fade from one from like a painted location into reality in theater you can't do that you can't yeah, but it's just not it's just not good oh you are so incredibly wrong that is objectively <laughs> incorrect that is objectively incorrect that is such like a, you can't look at that fucking scene it may not be your thing it may not be what you like because there's no cg robot men punching each other it may not be what you like robbie there's no big dinosaurs and then fucking richard attenborough going like oh welcome to jurassic park there's none of that robbie i'll admit that but you can't look at that and go it's shit you can't look what? at that and go it's shit it wasn't for me. No, yeah, it wasn't for you. That's it. Yeah, that, that, that's more accurate terminology for it. I would say, yeah. Uh, you know what you were saying about how this is shot so nicely? Yes. Te- technically outstanding. Yes. It's just a lot of big wides and close-ups, though, isn't it? There's right. not. <laughs> it's still, it's still what? shot <laughs> like a... Well, because it's, it's still shot like a movie from the 40s. Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing about this that screams like, "Holy shit, this is amazing!" With the like the camera and how how it's shot, it's just yeah, it's a movie know, from the forties. No, it's it's the use of the technical or of it. It's the use of like the technical and procedure and how they really like use yeah. like the ability of being able to like bathe each like film in like a certain like exposed like printing process. And everything. That's like where I mean. Like it's like you look like this film came out two years after It's a Wonderful Life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's a Wonderful Life's better. I I'll admit that. I'll say that. But you know what I mean? It's like they looked they looked like fucking like so far apart in terms of technical like advancements. Yeah. Like even like that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just this. I mean, I don't it, even know if it. I don't even know if it is more technically advanced than that. I mean, it's a, obviously it's different. Because it, it's a wonderful life. It's in black and white. There's no color in it, and this has got all the color all the time. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't say that's a huge technological leap. Obviously, going to color film is a huge technical, uh, technological leap. But there, it's apples and oranges. It's a completely different process. No, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I don't know. It's just, it's just like a film that never like, like it's even again. I don't, I don't, I don't look at this film and necessarily think like, oh yeah, the two thousands. You know what I mean? It's not like that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I look at yeah. it, I go like, but there's like films like within like, like the late fifties that don't quite even look to this standard. Like there's like, they I think like even matches with some like a Vertigo, which has like gorgeous rich colors as well, and like really like in like interest in like blocking and camera, yeah, like placement and stuff. I think. I feel like yeah, it, it belongs yeah. within that time period. It's, like, it's, it's just more so it's like it feels ahead of its decade. Not saying by 
loads, but I think, like, especially if you look at like the yeah. things that we've already well, we've discussed on this podcast through its time, I I was I would sit it again within some along the lines of like a vertigo, or even like a twelve angry men, like in that like at least like a decade ahead. No, but here's the thing for me, right? I can appreciate that for the time it looks nice, sure. But it still looks nice now. It looks yeah, yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It, it looks nice. It's fine. Yeah, sure, whatever. There's nicer looking films. It's not the most nice looking film in the world. Uh, but, but there's a few. There's yeah, a, all there's right. A few, there's a few nicer looking films. Uh, yeah, right. But um, that can't uh, that can't do everything for me. For me, it needs to have a good story. No, <laughs> no, nowhere to be seen. And there it is. It's also here. It's also here. What? The, the good story. A sto- it's also a good story. No, the, no, it's right no. again. Right. I think I found out what you, you, you don't like anything where there's an artist who's woe is me. No, I love La La Land. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And that baffles me that you like that film. Because it's great me. and everyone's... Ch- Eh. It, it's it's well done. It's I like fake, I like it's a, it's I like it when drama. when artists I like I like it when artists are struggling to get to where they want to be and they're not being a big old cunt about it. That, that's what I enjoy. Yeah, but like <laughs> you, but like it's it's like a thing where I never feel like this film is of sympathy of that. It's not really. No, no one's being an arsehole. I think the guy, the the main guy, Lermontov, is, is Lermontov. Yeah, he's a, a he's, a bit, yeah. He's, he's a bit of a dick, and it's never really explained as to why he's a bit of a dick. Why does he hate love so much? Because it takes them away <laughs> from their. Because it takes them away from the art, Robbie. It takes them sure. away from the art. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Because I mean, because it know. becomes the, because it becomes more important in someone's life than than their pursuit. Yeah, you can do both. <laughs> I mean, I'm in a relationship for four years and I'm working at ITV, so what <laughs> What do you want from me? All I'm saying you is... You can do I'm both. Good. All I'm <laughs> saying is there's a reason why I'm able to crank out two films with it like, <laughs> already. Yeah, because because you don't have a full-time job like I do. I, I, I work every and, day. I can't do, and, and, I can't do and, that. And, it, and, it's, and it's just me, Robbie. It's just me. I'm, uh, I'm by myself. That's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, but... Yeah, but... <laughs> sorry. That argument didn't make any sense. It, it, it's... Having a girlfriend isn't stopping me from making films. No, no having I'm a, not. Having a job is <laughs> stopping me from making films. Just because, because you're no, on your own isn't the reason that you're allowed no, to make no. movies. You can, do, you, no, can, the thing, you can do that either way. No, the thing is... No, right. Okay, moving our fucking personal comparisons to a side. This is going to get messy. Because <laughs> it's going to get messy. Okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm stopping the topic there before it gets any further. Uh, okay. <laughs> But like <laughs> what? Because we won't. Because it will happen once. Because we won't. Because we won't get. Because it won't become a fun conversation. The point that I'm trying to make. You started is, it. Yeah, uh, it kind of. It kind. It kind of became a shared thing. Uh, uh. Then, the point that I'm trying to say, in the context of this film, is that it's a thing where it's shown that f- for the people getting to the to like the top point. Like the top point mm. of where they're at, like where you know, with um, Moira Shearer's character, I forgot her character's name. Uh, but there you go. Why? Right, I can't fucking remember. <laughs> right, hang on. We're not doing this because there's there's great films, and like, right, you <laughs> tell me five characters. Okay, a, a film that we both like. You tell me five characters from It's a Wonderful Life. George Bailey. Yes, and who's he married to? Mary. Right? Who's his brother? Um I rest my case. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I rest my case. Uh so that doesn't fucking matter. Karen's Remembering Karen also I watched it a week ago. Shut up. <laughs> I can so... remember the name of the leads from It's a Wonderful Life, and I haven't seen that since Christmas. It's not my point. Not my point at all. Okay. Not my point at all. 
No point at all. But like when she gets to she gets to the spot in this film through because well, when she talks to Lermontov first of all, it's like, oh, uh, this is everything that I want. This is everything I'm working towards. And this mm-hmm. is why I want to do it. And all that. And then it gets to a point where it's like, and it's already been a shown proof thing because that's like, it's the point of like, well, that's the thing. That's the only main thing in your head. That's the important thing. That's the important thing for you. Mm. And like the argument that's made here, it's not even necessarily an argument. It's more of like a statement and a showcase thing where it's like, well, that, but also it's the thing where like, once you do fall in love, that does become the most important thing in your life. It does. Yeah. Not saying that you you want to sacrifice your thing, but naturally you put one over the other. Hmm. And then so the argue, so the, the showing thing for that is in, on Lermatov's point of view, he's like, well, the, for like such an elite ballet, he wants that to be the most important thing. And because that's when you'll achieve the most fulfilled, the fulfilled, the most fulfilled part of your art. If you're also in love in that point, your focus is, your soul focus is gone from the art because you're also your main importance is your love that you're feeling and the love that you're sharing with someone your love is no you're no longer in love with your art you're in love with another person which is that's yeah. that's that's the that's the that's the study that this film has but i well then it's probably just that i fundamentally disagree with it then but i don't think because... the film nece- but i don't think the film is trying to say that that's a right way to do it yeah, because she hit because she gets hit by a train. Well, yeah, but but like I'm not saying like that. <laughs> but like I but like we don't look at that like oh yeah good. You know what I mean? It's not like it's it's. But it's, then how am I supposed to? Well, how am I supposed to look at it then? Well, I don't I don't take it away. I don't think you're meant to take it away. Like ah, she should have just took a ballet. Yeah, because she was about to go off. To, I don't know, man. She's it's like. Like I don't, I feel like it's more of a thing where like her pushing everything away to do that was the mm. thing that drew her into that state. Do you know what I mean? It's like love didn't make her get hit by a train. No, pursuing her aunt made her get hit by a train because maybe the shoes were possessed or something. I don't think you made her think that in depth about that element of it. What the fuck's that about? But, uh, all right. I, I think, I think, what the, the fuck's going on there? Well, I don't think it's meant to be looked at as like a supernatural element. She dances herself in front of a train. And the whole story beforehand is that the, the girl in the fable danced until she died. Yeah. And it's the same shoes. No, well, it's more of a... It's <laughs> right. It, you're taking it very literal in that regard. The shoes is more... It's, it's more of like a representative, sig- a symbolic type of thing that sends like... The shoes is linked to... It's it's her ballet shoes. So, again, her yeah. art is the thing that, yeah. drove, that drove her to that. The shoes yeah. itself isn't talking to her in her sleep, is it? No, I, no, I know the shoes aren't talking to her, but, like... A bit much, isn't it? But the shoes aren't making her run away. Like it's it's it, what it's what the shoes are to her, you know what I mean? It's not like, it's what like it is. It's 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 what. what it, well, she's not because she's not wearing them on a Sunday walk, is she? It's like when she is wearing them, it's well, for no. a performance. Yeah, yeah. Then so, she dances in front of a train. Does she dance in front of it? Well, she's like going after that guy, isn't she? Yeah, she jumps, and, and but she's like uncontrollably. And then she gets hit by a train. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's very confusing. <laughs> Why the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't know. Just have her be doing the ballet. She's at the edge of the stage doing a big ballet bit, and then the shoes. And she's dancing, and um, because she's not focusing properly, she goes next she cock- the orchestra pit. Co- she, yeah, she cockles on her ankles and falls off the fucking stage and breaks her neck. I mean, don't I'm- make her run run across a whole fucking sea. Like she's possessed, and then get hit by a train. I mean, I will admit it is the it is the weaker <laughs> element of the film. And it's, it's not a film that it doesn't yeah. tank it for me, but it's. But I will admit it's like no, yeah. If it was more like a, you know, like the thing where it's like, like in that 
ballet sequence where it's like it flashes on the shoemaker, but then it's like she sees Lermontov and then she sees the conductor. Like, you know, it could have, yeah. they, they, they could have done a similar thing. You know, I, I do agree yeah. in that regard. And that, um, I need to look up the actual names of the manga. I, I just need to refresh my mind. <laughs> I'll just say it for me, like, I didn't, I didn't like any of the characters in particular. They're all kind of boring. Oh, okay, I didn't buy I didn't buy the relationship between them at all. It came out of nowhere. My uh, it was just that... like they need to get together because that's what the movie's about. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh, Julian Craster and Vicky Page. That was that. That, that was the that was the others. Um, yeah, no, I I think I think um, I do agree in the sense of like there was necessarily no grand build to their yeah. them getting together. My biggest connection I could make in terms of like how could you make the connection to them um, being romantically interested to now mm. to that point like what is the connective piece in it I guess the co- most connective piece in it is probably during the ballet when she sees Julian conducting and then it's that moment where he ends up like walking to her and then he changes to the other man that she ends up dancing with yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's the only point where, like, you could probably see, like, in that moment, like, because it's the more like tranquil, peaceful side of her ballet at that point of the da- of the performance mm. at that point. So I think it's probably more of a thing where it's like it's only her and him in the world at this point, and he actually and and, yeah. and then he comes up to her, you know, and she come and then they embrace, but it's, you know, it's edited in a way to be. It's the other dancer. Yeah. I think that's the. I, well, I think that's the only so way like, where you, where you could probably connect it. Because I I took that more as like she's just been thinking about him a lot, and then so the question for me still remains is like, well, why though? Because <laughs> there's nothing. But prior to that, there's like there's no chemistry. There's no romantic connection. They're just these two need to get together for us to make our statement piece, and then the argument that the movie's making you know, love versus art or whatever. I just think it's a completely bullshit argument regardless. So, mm. you know. I, I, st- I still think the film doesn't frame itself in as an argument with it. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't think it's trying to make you... I don't think it's trying to I don't to think it's trying to make... It, no, no, no. I don't think it's trying to make you think either way. Um, it's which just again the fact is, that they're presented it anyway. Is that what you're like? It's just, it's just Yeah, it's just the, the presentation of like... Oh my god! It's this thing of like, can you have, can you have love and still persist? You cause you fucking yes, cause you can. What? Forget it. What? I don't know. No, I think... it's not even a fucking question. Just I, 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 don't I, know. I think I always look at it not in a way of like a relatability factor, but I think I look at it more in a way of like it's an interesting outlook. If uh, to like from a fictional story narrative point of view, mm. it's an interesting thing to put a character who is not making those connections in their head. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's like, there's some, there's, there's something to it for me where it's like, um, where it's like having your full on thrown in passion and that's all you know, but versus maybe developing a human connection with someone and that being a more of hmm. a natural, like that, like that's a thing, like that's always a thing where it's like, well, that's the thing that just ends up happening naturally. You, you don't try for that. That's the thing that just builds and happens. Whereas art, you really are putting all your effort into trying for that. So I like so mm. so. It's more of a thing. I I think it's an interesting outlook to have the con, to look at the conflict in your head where it's like, but I'm really trying my. I'm putting all my actual effort into this and all my act like conscious way of um, embracing of expressing myself and all in this thing. However, there's this other thing. I don't know how it's happened, but it has happened, and it is happening. Mm. But I'm not putting any conscious effort into doing it. It just is happening. I think there's, yeah. it's it's an interesting outlook either way to look at for that. Um, mm. I don't know whether if the story might have been might have enhanced that a bit more if we so solely followed Vicky, if yeah. we or solely followed Julian. We don't really follow either. I mean, the film follows three. 
It's 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 it, I, we go we go it, we go from Lermatov, we go Krasner, and we go Vicky. Vicky. Lermatov is the protagonist. Ah, uh, I guess so. He he is. He he would. I I bet if you if you looked at like percentage wise, I bet he has the most screen time of any of them. No, I agree. He is he is the centerpiece of everything happening. He is the he is the catalyst in yeah. it all. But I find it difficult to say he's the protagonist. Purely, be- he, I would say so. He's he's the reason for the film to happen. Yeah, but I feel like there's a lot of Vicky that you can look at. Do you know what? It's, it's because of that big dance sequence, and that is entirely mm. again, it's the Red Shoe story, but it's also by that point we've also naturally moved ourselves to also know Vicky's story and her journey that. We're also watching her story unfold in that moment, and I think to me that and 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 I know you could be like, oh well, it's Lermontov, he put the play on and all that, and oh well, it's Julian's mm. music, but but we're watching the vi- the visual story that's being told. We're watching Vicky go through the story. So I think that's, yeah. I guess you could probably say that's where it tries to switch it up more on her being the voyeuristic point of the story. Maybe not the protagonist, but I would say more than anyone, we're more looking at the story through her eyes than anyone else. No, I disagree. Do you feel like we're Lerm- looking through Lermatov? Yeah, cause it's always like... It's always him talking to some fucking guy in an office set that we've seen a million times going, I think that these two are getting too close together. Or, I think this guy, he's got something and we should let him blah, 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 blah. Call him in here. And then he comes in and he has three lines and he goes, are you going to let me do the music? And then he leaves. And then it's back to fucking Lembertop. It's always things happening around him and him telling people to do things constantly. Oh, no, but I we think- never find out anything about him. <laughs> I think it's just because I'm, I I look I don't know I see that that feels more like I'm just watching Lermatov, as opposed mm. to like, I feel like a, do you know what it is it's because we're not because we're starting, we're watching the start of Julian's story and we're watching the start of Vicky's story. We're like midway through Lermatov's whole thing. You know what I mean? He's already mm. been there. You know, we haven't watched him go like rags to riches or anything like that. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel yeah. like that. I feel like that's where it is for me in the sense like, well, we've seen Vicky before she is the lead of the Red Shoes. And we've seen Julian before he's orchestrating yeah. this and composing but, but the I, music. But I think what um, what the, it was a hurdle for me to get over, and I don't think I did get over it because I didn't like any of the characters, but is the fact that yeah, we've seen them before he was conducting the Red Shoes and before she was performing on the big stage and whatever. But when we see them before that, she's the daughter of an incredibly rich family that would have probably got somewhere anyway because she's incredibly rich. Mm-hmm. And and he is an opera student and he's got money to go to the opera and, oh, this guy's stolen my piece and blah, 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 blah. It's like, well... They're, they were both going to fucking do it anyway. Like, it, what I don't like is that they're all just, like... You never see them fucking struggle for anything. No, that's fair. That's fair. They're just handed shit constantly. And then it's meant to be like, you are rooting for these people because you want them to get to stardom. And I was like, I don't fucking care if they get to stardom. Because she's rich already. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. You know? Yeah, no, I don't know. I think, and th- and then because there's no chemistry, I don't care if they get together <laughs> either. You know, if if maybe they seemed like there was some romantic thing there, and and there was some tension as to we can't get together because you know what happened to the other people. There's yeah, none of that. Yeah, yeah no, I so, I, do, I I will agree in the know. sense of like the film probably would have also benefited if like we did have like maybe another scene, at least mm. like after the ballet and before they got together. I do agree yeah. with that. Like maybe, do you know? I think because uh, it is because I will. I will. I'll say. It. I mean, I'm a big fan of the romantic genre of the romantic genre. This film doesn't click for me on a romance yeah. level. It doesn't. It just says, the, the, I'm not there 
rooting for them as a couple, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. it, it is it is a lot more like, I guess, like the understanding does come more so from like the point of why I had weird deja vu that I felt like I had the exact same. <laughs> I just, just, sorry, I just, I, I just <laughs> like, I just like, shit, did I, do we have this exact same thing like about like a week ago? So, um, mm. no, but I think that, um, uh, yeah, because it doesn't click for me from like a romance point of view. I do think it's. Do you, I think do you know where it does click for me? Because I like the because obviously I lo- I mean Whiplash is one of my all time faves, and it's mm. that type of story architect with like. You know you you know it's like ah oh, well I'm you know I'm being an arsehole, but it's because you need I'm trying to make you the best ever, you know mm. and and, that, and that's the. And it's the same type of structure. Like, Lermatob is very Fletcher. And, you know, and you could look at, like, Vicky as, like, a good parallel to Andrew Damon. You know what I mean? There's, like... Mm. Uh, or, like, even fucking Julian, maybe. I don't know. But you know what I mean? There's, like, things there. You know, there's the protege and the mentor in the art and struggling, blah, 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 blah. Whiplash is the yeah. best that it ever will be for that. In all honesty, it just is. Uh, it is. It's the best one. It's the best one. It's it's Lala. It's, it's, Lala it's, it's the, the best it's one. It's the best one. It's fine. We could agree with. We could, it's, we could it's agree. Lala. It's Lala. It's Lala. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. You don't. No, 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 no. No, it's fine. Okay. No, no. It's fine. Honestly, it is Lala. No, you don't. You don't need. You don't need. You don't need to say. You don't need to agree with me just to agree with me, Robbie. We know it's Whiplash. Yeah, we know it's. No, no, no. But no, but it. No, but it is Lala. No, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Whiplash. Yeah, definitely. But I think that um. That's where, like, I think. I think that's where, like, the story, like, I'm always just going to be interested in that type of story. Not from necessarily, not, again, not from, like, a wanky point of view. I'm like, well, I'm an artist, and I see myself. I don't, I'm not like that with it. It's more, oh, it, yeah, yes, it's my world. So you are going to have some sort of, like, fascination with anything that you could somewhat relate to. In a, I think I think you know I don't I'm not, I didn't, I'm not a ballet dancer or a music composer mm. but I you know I'm a filmmaker you know I do you know you know there's a you know I I I go through an artistry you know what I mean and I'm within mm. that world so naturally I'm going to have interest in any film surrounding that type of world it's just, it's just what's gonna happen like so like it's like someone who might be like who have a fighting background might be really into the Rocky films because, you know, that's just the world they yeah. in, really. Because they also have a robot butler. They also have a robot butler. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, I think, and I think, and I'm always just going to be fascinated with, like, looking at that process of it and that take on, mm. like, you know, the battling with yourself mentally over things, whether it be, like, you know, it's like, am I good enough? Like, is my is my art uh, actually good enough? Uh, is this worth still pursuing? You know, that type of thing with it. And there's elements of that in this film, I think. And so, like, the world itself naturally is. Like, that type of story is always going to, like... It's always going to hook my interest no matter what, naturally. And I think, and also at another point, um, what I think really connects for me with this film. It's in a similar way how Ron really like just struck a thing with me. It's like there's just so when if you just do something really visually like something, again, if I've got an interest in the story and then you just make it so stunning to look at, then I'm just like fucking wow. Again, that dance sequence is one of my favorite scenes in film. Cause it's 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 a, obviously it's just the performance of the red shoes, but also at that point we've gotten to the point now where now it's mirroring the conflicts of the character. So it's like okay, there's le- there's a layer to that, and also it's just like we've got all these intricate, we've all these interesting things with the editing that they're doing. We got like all these set designs that they're doing, and just the the way they are using the light and the cinematography. There's just a lot going on that I'm just very like wow, that's just fucking just like just so like everything comes together in that moment and there's no dialogue in it and i'm and i'm getting everything that's being um being communicated so i think that's where it is with me with this film where like i'm gonna it's in a world and a type of narrative that i'll always be interested in in a style that will always interest me so i could and i could understand the narrative side of it all 
but also it, but i guess that it comes down to the fact of like yeah i'm a simple man i see this type of thing with this type of thing and i'm i'm sold with it yeah i mean that kind of story irritates me and uh, and is the reason i haven't seen this movie uh, my background for the audio listeners is Babylon. I haven't I mean, seen Babylon's, Babylon. Babylon's a pretty I'm, fun time. It's a pretty fucking good I, 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 I haven't seen Babylon, but I imagine it's just this. Yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. No? no. Oh, right, okay. Well, I, mean, I, there's, would be. I mean, there's that element in it, but you've got like five other fucking carriers in it. That isn't that story. Uh, okay. So. But I th- I, like, the story of the... Oh, they just they want to make it so bad that they, they push everybody away. Hey... My, in my opinion, you can you can pursue your art and you can pursue your dreams and not be a dick. <laughs> it's allowed. You can oh, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It just makes the characters really unlikable and pretentious to me. Like, every time. I like I love Whiplash. Don't get me wrong. I think it's an incredible movie. I hate Andrew Neiman with with a passion. I hate that guy. He sucks. No need to be an asshole. But but him. I understand him more so than, say... Riders in La La Land. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, the thing with Miles Teller in Whiplash, for me, I understand him because he's pushed to that point by a knobhead. There's an external knobhead. <laughs> push, push, there's, an external, there's an external knobhead pushing him to be a knobhead. Right, I get that. In La La Land, it's not about... I'm pushing everybody away in pursuit of my art and blah, 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 blah. That's not what that movie is about. That movie is two people pursuing their dreams. They get there and can they still make the relationship work? And the relationship falls apart and that's okay. And that's what that movie is about. That's not, I'm pushing you away because I'm an arsehole. It's just that the relationship starts to break down because they don't have enough time for each other. That's what that movie is. But movies like this that just make the character a dick <laughs> annoy me. And I also don't think that this movie really does that because they're not pursuing anything. No one's pursuing anything ever. She says at the beginning what she wants to do with her career. And Lemon Tov or Lemon Tov or whatever the fuck he's called says, okay, you can be in my ballet. And the rest of the movie is just both of them being given things by him. Mm. There's, there's, no, there's no, I'm striving to get to this thing and oh, my parents are trying to contact me and they can't because I'm just I'm ignoring them. I'm di-. There's none of that drive. There's no drive in the story. It's just, I'm doing a thing. And then the dickhead guy gives me another thing to do. And I do that thing. And everything is handed to me. And everything's fine. And then I'm just going to do a stage play for 20 minutes in the middle of the movie for no reason. But... That's a big reason I, for it. <laughs> I, no, I, no, I get it. The film's about doing the stage play, right? But it doesn't need to be 20 minutes long. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm not a fucking ballet guy, am I? I'm not going to enjoy it anyway, regardless. You know? It's not like the end of Nativity. It's like 15 <laughs> minutes, boom, right. t- th- like three, four songs, we're out, and they're all great and adorable. This is going to be like, ah, oh, you're looking into the... But I don't... I don't learn anything apart from this is the play that they were doing and it went well. And it's fine, but I might as well just watch a play because the rest of the scenes of the movie are all shot in wides. So. But I, I, no, I get what you mean. It says there's no necessary, but I don't, I, I don't know if I would, I would have fucking not, I don't know if I would have even liked it if we had like the conflict. You know what I mean? It's like it would have because we would have been like, "Fuck's sake, we're driving it, this down to then go back to where we're already going." And I think like, like it's it's more like chase the adrenaline of what it's given you. But there doesn't. There's no adrenaline. No, no. I mean, no. But for them, just, that's what I mean. It's they're getting the thing of like, "Oh, I'm doing the thing," and then it's more like we're taking the ride they, with them. But they never seem particularly excited about it. Ah, no, that's not true. Wait, Ju- wait, Julian's it- always like, oh, fuck it, love it's always doom in, but... Yeah, but then when it's it's like when he finally gets like... It's like the pit where he's like, um, he has like the music. He goes, oh, we need new music. Goes, oh, here it is. It's like, change this. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get right to it. He's just fucking off and doing it. He's loving yeah, it. Yeah, but then, but then, and it's then like, and it's the watch mo- him do it. And it's like the moment... But what, you wanted like a whole sequence of like watching him like compose? 
Yeah, we'll make him look like he's like trying. It's we just see, we, we have... see him, we see him conducting the orchestra when he's like trying. You know, so it's like we know what he does. We've seen it. We can see what he's doing. I don't need like a, but we see a the, sequ- we see I don't need a scene of him products. writing sheet music. We always see the end product. It's always do this. He's like, oh yeah, absolutely, I will, Mister Blah Blah Blah. And then we have two more scenes with that guy talking in an office about nothing. And then in the next scene that we see Julian, he's already done it. And it's like, oh, okay. There's no... It's just a flat line. The movie is just a flat line. There's no fucking anything. There's no ebbs. Mm. There's no flows. No peaks, no troughs. <laughs> no fucking... No conflict to drive the story forward. No twists, no turns. Just watch this one thing happen after another and then watch 20 minutes of a play in the middle and then she gets hit by a train. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think... Excuse me. I think it's like... I don't know. It's... It was never going to win you over. It's quite the honest... Re, the, it's quite the honest uh, reception of this. This yeah. was never going to be... A film that Robbie Tweedale was going to like. It wasn't. It never was. And I'm not saying like the Because it's like, I don't know. It's, I'm not saying like it's a thing where it's like, well, then by default, then everyone take it for granted. Take his opinion with a pinch of salt because it was never going to even win him over anyway. It's, you know, it's one of these things where it's like, it's, I can understand what you mean. And everything that you have, well, not everything. Most of the things you have said, I can understand and be like, yeah, okay, I get it. And I get it. Yeah, the romance didn't even hook me that well. Yeah, the ending's a bit odd. And all that. Yeah, all this stuff. There, there is no necessary conflict with it. I, I I, do just think it is like an example of like, if you are into that type of story narrative, it's one of the better versions of it. And it definitely is a big blueprint for every, for most fucking struggling artist film. And like, last two decades i think you know what i mean it's like i feel like there's a lot look it, it's one of the more influential ones you can fucking look at you look at black swan even as well <coughs> and apart from black swan also being about ballet there's a lot of black swan that you go oh yeah well there's you know there's you can look at the red shoes and then this and you know mm-hmm. it's that uh, you know, black swan takes from quite a few films as well that would be fair it's not just but like you know it's like that it, it's a film that, like, within the f- late 40s, it's like, I can't think, I can't imagine there's many other films quite taking this. Do you know what? It's because I think as well, especially, like, before this point, I can't, I probably don't know many other films that took such a cynical look on the creative world. Because I'm sure, because probably anything before that was all very glitz and glam. Isn't this amazing? You're mm. fucking, you gotta, you gotta get the right audition, then you're gonna go on stage and you're gonna fucking steal the world whereas like this takes more of an approach of like right where, but what if like you only make this consume your mind and all that stuff and the possible conflicts that the possible emotional conflicts that can come with it because i mean again i know and i know what you mean in the sense of like you never said it's never a sympathetic point of view but also i'm sure you've had moments where it's like it's a very conflicting thing mentally in yeah with any creative thing, so, and I but think, that's not in this movie, though. No, well, no, there is emotional conflict in this, though. There is. It is. The thing. I'm not saying this necessarily hits the nail on the head or like it really drives it home, but it is an emotional conflict in the sense of like this or this. Like, is it like there's moments where like Vicky is like practicing or whatever, or like even like she's getting stage fright immediately and she's like shitting herself. She's like, fuck it out, whatever. It's like dog shit or whatever, and then like Lermontov has to be like. If if um if I thought you were bad, I'd be worrying. Do you see me worrying? Mm. No? Well then you're fine then. Get out there and just do what you've been doing. It's like there's you know, it's like we all shit ourselves about stuff and then it's like then you have to just get the right person to be like, I fucking would have said so. Just fucking go or like or like when Julian's like shitting himself before he's going on, he's like, It's a fucking good score, mate. Get on and do it. It's fine. It's great it's great music. Mm. You know, I feel like there's like there's elements of that with it. It's like cause it's like there's again I, I would be interested to see if there are films before this that if they do deal with it because again in maybe like a fred astaire film or a judy garland film there might be from like 30s or early 40s there might be like oh it's first show everything's gonna be wonderful and we're gonna knock it out of the park let's go woo and then it all goes class but there is that moment where it's like yeah you put your heart and soul on it 
But what if I've just wasted my entire time? What if it isn't good? What if I thought it was good, but it isn't? And then everything's been a waste. And now what? Where do I go from there? But, yeah. I... I and don't I think get what... that f from this. Beca because... It never feels like it's their show. Ever. It always feels like it's Lermitov's show. Yeah, but he's this presence over it. You know what I mean? That's, I, I, that's what it is to me. Like, they're like... They can be nervous about it, but it's not, it's not theirs. You know? Like, it's not theirs to be nervous about. I understand being nervous about going on stage, but, like, if they, if they fail, then that's fine. But no, it isn't, because then, because then, because it would be a thing where, like, well, now, Vicky's now known as the person that fucked up on stage. Everyone's seen it. Yeah, but, that's what it is. But what I'm saying is that if, if he's telling them it's fine... And I know that it's his thing. Hmm. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what? What am I worrying about as an audience member? No, but it's the point. Uh, what the point I was making is like the pre before that. Yeah. Of of be before you know it's that emotional point of being conflicted in your head about it until, until you need the hmm. right person to tell you nothing to worry about. Yeah. Whatever. But then there's also still always a chance the score could fuck up. Yeah. Someone, someone could be really confident in someone and that person could be ace it, but there's always a chance that it could still fuck up. Mm. There's still a chance that Vicky could... It's like, it's like there's always still a chance where Vicky can't, won't, like, match the tempo of Julian's music. There's always a point where Julian might not slow the tempo down for her. You know what I mean? It's like, just yeah, there's always that chance... Even though it's mm. not a likely chance, there's always that chance with it. And yeah, I don't know. I think, I think from a technical point of view, if we're on about the what, because I, I, if I, because in terms of like that, because I'm not sure if we have anything really to say, any more to say about the narrative. I think we mm. got the point across with it. Yeah, we, we're gonna go in circles if we keep going with it. Uh, in terms of that regard, I think from a technical point of view, because at the minute, um, and we might discuss a bit more about it, but at the minute, I'm fucking i'm doing i'm i'm in the midst of shooting the muse and this film is a is a big visual inspiration for that film yeah mm. uh, in the sense like i want the film to have a bit of a technicolor-esque thing going with it mm -hmm. and obviously i think this is maybe the best technicolor film going in for, in that in, from a looks point of view and even though it is the red shoes and obviously we think about like oh yeah red vivid vibrant stuff but what and the whole plot of the muse is the, the color red is actually quite integral to the muse, but also why I appreciate about this film is it's sparingly the use of the color red. Mm. Like it doesn't fill the frame all the time. There might be like an instance where there's a red carriage going across the screen or someone's rearing a red flower in the suit and there's no other reds. Apart from that, it's a, it's a majority quite a, not a flat color palette. It's, it's a, it's a color palette that uses its cur colors sparingly. And I think it's a great use of motivated color placement, mm. I think. And how that can make one emotionally feel just on sight. Because I even think, like, even the more tamer scenes where it's, like, the nighttime stuff, like, on the boats or whatever, where it's, like, where it almost just, like, a fucking, like, painting of, like, it's, like, blue with, like, a warm lamppost flares and then reflected in the water type of thing. Like, but, mm. you know, it's not, but it's not garish. It's not like, look at how like colorful this is. It's just quite, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's kind of like the perfect balance of being really colorful, but knowing how to fucking use the color and not mm. just really making it like, really like, um, garish and just like, like drabby do you know what i mean like it's 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 quite like i feel like it's like i feel like there's a good few films that need to like almost look at that and go like all right well why is it so like revered for how it looks and what mm. and what's it doing you know it's use it you know it's yeah red's an important color and especially i think as well when she's looking through her shoe cupboard it's like all her shoes like white beige black maybe and then you see the red ones, because and then it's like we our attention is really drawn to that because there's no other like striking color like that. I think I think that's like 
it, it's it's a great use of motor vehicle, I think, and like how it should be used. Yeah. And I think a lot of student films need to do. I th- well, not even student films. I think just a lot of like independent first time filmmakers need to like have that lesson yeah. generally anyway. It's like you need to like a lot of people are like, well, why does my film not look good? It's like because you're not like you're just shooting and you're not like yeah. thinking about like, well, how can I make the color palette visually pleasing? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? As I think you did well with like a story of love in the sense like, well, this guy's wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt and this girl's wearing a red dress and the rest is like, and you know, and then the bar that you chose is more like, like earthy type of colors that they, t- that both of them stand out in. Like that's an example mm-hmm. of like, you're okay. You know how, what you need to do with the color. It's not too overdone, but it's a simple point of like, well, that's going to be a motivated thing. It's, she's going to be easily identifiable because she's wearing a very like s- striking red dress. He's going to be very like stand out on site because he's wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt. An instant, and it's an instant yeah. character notification thing. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> See, I praise you. Go for yeah. it yourself. <laughs> take that. <laughs> I'll take that. But yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's a. The score's great as well. Obviously, it's really big lovely i mean it's difficult to tell if it's if i think everything's originally done i think yeah, i think brian easdell did every bit of music in this although i'm not sure i think there is a credit in the opening title sequence that also says the red shoes ballet conducted by blair or whatever oh uh, okay I, mean, I don't know but either way the music in the film it, it, it fucking rocks it for the film it is like, it gets the tone, like, yeah. you know, the ballet film and, like, this point. It's like, yeah, and the music does that. Hmm? Feels very lovely okay, yeah. and big. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. It's a, bit, it's a big orchestra, isn't it? It's not, it's not a score I'm sticking it's, on daily, is it? But you know no, what I mean? It's, no, it's, no. But, yeah, I mean, if a score's nice, a score's nice, you know? Yeah. I don't, rem- I don't remember a single thing from it, but I can imagine there's probably a... At some point. I mean, probably. <laughs> You know, big, big strings like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 They do a lot of them. Bloody love them. They do a lot of them. They do a lot of them. Um, it's really, it's really, it's a, it's a really nice use of big golden age cinema feel film. It's kind of the best way I can describe it. It's like, it's like if you just want a film, I think it's a film, if you want a film that just feels classic. Mm. And, like, it, it, it's that, I think. Yeah, that, not, I, that I can agree on. Like, I'm not saying necessarily, like, if you... If, I'm not saying if you necessarily believe it's a classic film. Like a, yeah. Like a masterpiece of film. I mean, it's obviously very heavily renowned. Uh, mm. um, frequent caller of the show, Monsicle, says he's a big fan of this film. Know that much. Oh, um, yeah, he used, he used quite oh, a bit... He, he used quite a bit of it when... Uh, Thinking about how to do Rage of Bull, apparently. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I yeah, I um, boy, have I got some things to say about Martin Scorsese today? But that's fine; they can wait. <laughs> it's like, we'll, we'll keep that mind in the intermission. Uh, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, no, Red Shoes. It's a film that is not an often watch for me, but when I do, I I, I like it a lot. It, it's 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 a uh, yeah. Good, good, uh, good old school Hollywood film that I think has that still has a story in it. That if you like that type of story, it's gonna sell for you, despite its age. Like if you like, if you like the whiplashes, or if you like the black swans, or if you like, um, all that. You know what I mean? Like all that type of things the the story will hook you in for it and i think the film is visually pleasing enough to where it doesn't look like anything else in the sense of it doesn't look like a typical 40s film that you may think of but it doesn't look like a modern film either so i think there's there's enough interest into it for someone who may want to get in older films doesn't know where to start they may like certain films of that ilk it's a good it's a good mm-hmm. gateway i think it's a good one for that i think yeah and with that for i me, think yeah go on robin it's, it's a movie i've seen once now 
I'll probably never watch it again. I didn't like it. <laughs> but everything that Oscar said, if you like that stuff, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, it really, that's, really, that's my little wrap up. The Red Shoes is really that type of film. It's like if you like the fi- if you like these types of films, you're gonna fucking love it. Yeah, but, sure. But if it's not your cup of tea, you're not gonna. It's not gonna sell you. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. It's not gonna. It's not gonna make you love these types of films if you don't like them already. It's not gonna convince you. No. No. And with that being said, shall we move on to the intermission? Yeah, go on then. What's your beef with Martin Scorsese? What's he on about with the Pope? Oh, this is weird. Yeah, this is strange. What the fuck is he talking about? He's like, so he says that he's had a meeting with the Pope. He was chatting with the Pope. And they were talking about the depiction of Christianity in, in media. And it's it's caused Martin Scorsese to be inspired to make a film about Jesus. <laughs> Marty, you've done that already. It's called The Last Temptation of Christ Star and Willem Dafoe. I've got it on my you, shelf. You, I've literally got it on my do- shelf. You've done that. And you've also made another movie about Christianity, Silence. Also banging. You've done well, well, I've you've done this. Christ. You've done this twice, dude. Another fucking boring long movie about Christianity isn't going to convince people that it's cool. Is Martin Scorsese a Christian? Is No, he's Jewish, isn't he? Or am I making that up? I think he's pretty Christian, right? I don't know, man. I think he is. Let me have a Google. You do that. Um, yeah. Oh, that was going to be bad. I was gonna, Right, you filibuster bit. I'm going to turn the light on. It's getting dark now. Oh, enjoy, man. Uh, is Martin Scorsese Christian? Is Martin Scorsese Christian Bale is one of the things that comes up. That's ridiculous. Um, uh, uh, I information. I can't, I can't. I was laughing because one of the suggested um, search results was, is Martin Scorsese Christian Bale? <laughs> yes, ma- yes. Scorsese has said he's Catholic. Okay, right, right. I am most comfortable as a Catholic, he says. Fair. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. Believe in what you want. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna shower you for that. But like, he, the, he like last week, he was making me real sad because he was saying he's only got so much time left. Well, there really was a whole thing where he said there, about yeah. he was on about that guy that won an Oscar and was like, uh, I've. Whoa. What the shit in fuck is this? Who is this? Me. Who is this? <laughs> Have you forgot your headphones? Oh, I'll, I'll get them in a minute. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? Ah, oh, it's Christopher Christopher! Oh on. my oh, god. Shit. I got a minute. Hang on, Sorry, I really fucked this up. I really fucked this up. Am I an old enemy? I am. Oh, Reese yeah, Bruce. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, it's all gone. You. What was, what oh, was the... this fucking guy. What was the song you were playing? Oh, that was yeah, the Better Call Saul thing. It was the Better Call Saul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a... Oh, it's look just at this his fucking, fucking guy. It's just his fucking chime. Did you hear that? Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, that's, gr- that's great. Put it, to the, put it to the microphone. Oh, I've got it. Nice. Yeah, I was just blaring that. Yeah, that's good then. stuff. Come closer, yeah. Reese. I shall. Do you see? Do God, you see I'm, I'm so see glad you're here. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad to be. We were here. talking about Martin Scorsese. Oh, yeah, I was just cinema. saying about how like uh, he was making me sad the other week because he was saying like, oh, this guy w- that was saying, oh, at the end of his career is like, I've got so many ideas and and now I've got so yeah, much more time that, left yeah. or whatever. And I was like, fuck, man, that's really sad. And I'm like, but then the next week, I'm like, He's you're choosing to do it. You're doing another movie about Jesus. That's your fucking. You literally I mean, were just saying how you have minimal time left to tell all the stories you want to tell, and you're taking up time fucking doing a movie about Jesus for no he, reason. That he no wants to wants. get in good before his time's up. Yeah, yeah, but he's done that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he's getting the good books. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. I'm coming. I feel like what do you say for your this, this is Reese Bruce. Uh, you've yeah, this is Reese. Sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've heard his name several times. He was yeah, probably. The Christmas special. Yeah, and oh, then th- I couldn't th- make th- it. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God this guy's here. Oh. It's been a long time coming. It really has. God, I miss you so much. I miss Timon. We, we saw each other oh. last week. Yeah. Yeah, is that, yeah so yeah. It's been, last been time I saw long. this guy was Friday. It's been <laughs> way too long. Holy How shit. You, have, you, have you done talking about Martin Scorsese? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. How, nice. how, how was your lunch when you, when you lot went out? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you went yeah to it was like Jackson Wharf. Yeah, yeah, yeah solid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was nice. I I had a burger. Um, mm. It's particularly nice. Julia paid, so it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fucking lovely. Did she, by, she, by all accounts. Did she did she uh, get a bit happier when I dropped yeah. off last? Oh yeah. Yeah, she's all good, man. Ah, well, that's good at least. Then. Yeah, oh, I don't, I don't know about this. What do you mean? Have you been happy? She seemed fine when I saw her. No, well, I dropped. No, I dropped him off because he was he was nearly. Equally, oh right, of course, the stress of yeah. getting equipment from one Lee Charlie. Yeah. Like last time I saw her, she was looking moody on the curb of a travel. Uh, I mean, no, no, I she was she was fine her. after a while. <laughs> after a while. It, it, I mean, yeah, it, it was. It took some convincing. I mean, to be fair, though, fair. we did we did get back like. Eight minutes before checking out time. It was so tight, man. <laughs> so she, so she'd already come downstairs and checked out for me. Her blood pressure was. Through. Um, and then we got halfway across that field, and she remembered that she'd left my phone charger plugged in in the room, and um, and that was my fault. So I had to run back, and uh, <laughs> get oh, a phone wasn't, charger. It wasn't a fun time. That messaged me and I was like, "Do you want to get lunch?" And then we just went out for a chill lunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it really diffused the situation. Yeah. Uh, good. It was the second we saw Reese in his bomber jacket and his sunglasses. She was instantly fine. Nice. He is, he is, you, you are really pulling off the, the Maverick look recently. Yeah, I've been getting yeah. I mean, Danny said I look like a, a rich boy and then Oscar was my driver when we went out the that other night. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Yeah, 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 to be fair, you do kind of look like his driver. I can see that. Well, I have been lately. Yeah. I I have been. Been. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do I owe you petrol money? I've been driving. I've been driving. I drove in a Marks and Spencer's the other oh, day. All right, you don't have to out me like that. Of course that. you did. Of course you fucking did. Uh, what was he doing? His weekly fucking shop. No, no, no it, was, it was a few. Uh, no, I, wa I wasn't actually, Robbie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was Does just a bit low on supplies. I do that in fucking no wardrobes. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, I just thought, you know, I have a right to eat in a town that I no longer live in. <laughs> I thought I'd get myself some food. Sorry, I can afford nice stuff. I'll kill I myself. I oh, what? Oh, come on, man. I got a burger this evening. What type of burger? Did Julia pay for it? B beef? No, but like fucking a mac. What? <laughs> Oh, oh no, no, you, you no, no! Sorry, no. I got to take. It was from a place called Mr. T's Burgers in Leeds, and um, I think they're a drug front. But I don't want to. I'm not sure, man. I've seen. You don't. You don't want to out them on a public. I don't. I don't want to out them in case I get. Uh, yeah, in case I get like you know, a knock on the door. But I've seen many people go into the Mr. T's with the Mr. T's bag already in hand, and come out with the same Mr. T's bag. Was the so, burger good? Yeah, that was lovely. Yeah. At the end of the Probably day, the... isn't that all that matters? Yeah, exactly. It's a tasty burger. It might be the, the MD that was talking. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. 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 Might be that talking, but it tasted nice. Oh, good. I guess. We had, we had some chicken, um, chicken and chips. Yeah, I'm glad I got your message. Chicken and chips. I was, I was tempted to message you, how long can you take talking about shoes? Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Race, you've got no fucking idea. <laughs> My God. It got, it got like, the so we had an argument about it. I, I could hear some. I hear one side of it, like through the floor. Yeah. I was but, like, Jesus Christ! But like, this is what it's like. We, to be we, had, we, we, had, we had an argument, and it got it got so personal so quickly, and then we had to shut that down. <laughs> no, it and then just, <laughs> and, <laughs> and divert and away. It went. Oh. It went like it glossed straight over the film and into fucking just like personal attacks. Nice. <laughs> and we were like, "Well, let's put an end to that and yeah, get back to the movie." He, he, I let's reckon. pub the brakes a bit. It's like, uh, it wasn't but, even an argument that we would have like meant to keep happening in real life. Do you know what I mean? Nah, nah. It would have just been nah. a thing that, like, I would have said it to vent something off my chest, and then vice versa as well. So there would have just been <laughs> no way to do it. I was like, no one needs to hear this. Oh, dear. Yeah, this is fine. We already, um, did, we, already did yeah. the we already did that in the last episode. We were like, I was like yeah. Oh, yeah, good point. Maybe we should have ended the episode that way. Anyway. Uh, yeah, he started it, though, so it's fine. <laughs> I did kind of, I did start that one, because you were yeah. <laughs> You were complaining about the fact that like all like the actors come up to me and go, like, "Oh, so you're so class," and you're like, "Well, blah, 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 blah. yeah." And I, and I go like, "Well, you know, what, Robbie, I don't appreciate everyone going to me, like, oh, you know what, I would shag Robbie, blah 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 blah, blah. you know." And then it became that. Probably one of my favourite yeah. sayings was just like, "Yeah, don't worry, everyone, I do like you all." Oh uh, yeah, yeah. saving that thing. <laughs> I did well, say that, but I but I I don't dislike it. anybody. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I dislike yeah. some. People, 
but not the people that I said I disliked. Who doesn't dislike someone? Yeah, exa- exactly. Like, I dislike you, for example. Yeah. And that's, and I know, that's I've fine. noticed. I've got a very antagonistic, <laughs> like, character in your stories. I'm wondering yeah, where this is but, coming from. <laughs> well, there's, there's, one, there's one coming up. You'll be here for the Tyler tale. Oh, I'm so excited. But, like, no one, no one came up to me during the film festival when you were up here. You know, right. No, I, I did have some weird shit happen to me at the film festival, though. What happened? Uh, in terms of people coming up to me. Three separate people came up to me and were like, you and Julia are just the best couple. I've I've never seen two people, like, more, like, suited for each other. And, like, I've never seen two people, like, so smitten and all this. Did they know and Julia? I, and I was looking at them going, who the fuck are you? <laughs> They're like. Yeah, I was, was going to say, did you know try, him? I was going to guess who it was. I thought like no, Anna said. No, like, the way he no, was saying that, I was just like, like, he doesn't know these people. They were like two years below us at uni. I was like, you don't know me and you don't know her. The fuck do you mean? You've never seen two people more suited to each other. We could be arguing constantly. She could be, she could be beating me up behind closed doors. You don't and fucking does. know, do you? Yeah, yeah. You don't fucking know that. Um, what, is, what a strange thing to say to someone. Just because we were dancing together and smiling at each other. Jesus. Was it one of the actors? Yes. Who says love is dead? Yeah, who says chivalry is dead? I don't yeah. want to name names, so I won't try it. Um, there, was a, there was a film student as well. Tyler. It wasn't Tyler. But Tyler was in a weirdly cuddly mood. Yeah, no, no, I knew he was drunk because he put his thumbs up at me and then flipping me off. So I was just like, whoa. He, yeah. he's, he's clearly he's a in a bit to drink. He yeah, I, that night. Oh really? Yeah. He didn't. Well, he never. He, really talks he, be, he barely he really talks, talks to, to me. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I I usually go up to him and try and give him a hug, and he just kind of stands like this, and I just kind of grab him. Yeah. But he ca- he came up to me and hugged me. And I was like, the oh. fuck's wrong with you? Are, are you dying? The fuck's going on? It was a momentous night for him. It was. Yeah, I suppose it was, wasn't it? Bless yeah. him. I mean, to be fair, we were very merry in our like. Yeah, by the end of it. Oh, I was having a great time. Yeah, I was so drunk. Yeah, it was great. No, well, um, well, I witnessed the most awkward hug between Tyler and Ellie that night. Oh, well. God, yeah. Ellie Cutler. Yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, it was like just after the films had finished, and I was like stood talking with Alison, and Ellie was also there. And then like, then Tyler came up. And Ellie does a thing where like, she just went, Tyler! And then, oh, like, no. and then Tyler, and then, but like, Ellie kind of like went like that, as if to open her arms slightly. And then Tyler went, uh, and then he kind of like raised his arms a little bit. <laughs> And then they just kind of like hugged each other, but not really. And then they, and then Tyler then just walked away. And then Ellie went, "I've never hugged Tyler in my life." And I went, "Yeah, maybe you should never have done that." It's, yeah, it's maybe clear. you should never he, do he, it he, again. He clearly went into shock. Well, it was like the two of them just kind of like thought, like, "What do we do? Should we hug? I guess we should." Oh, this is odd. Well, okay. They're smushed into each other. Yeah, they, they were just kind of like, "Yeah, maybe don't do that ever again, Ellie." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not hugged. great. No. Who's who's this woman behind us? This one. Yeah. It's, but that's Elle. It, it's, oh, <laughs> holy shit. Oh, it's, hey, Elle. It's, uh, it's, it's Moira Shearer. She was the leader. Oh, of the nice to meet you, Moira. Yeah. 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 Oh, I have an... An- behind him. I have... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got, I've got an announcement. Oh, holy shit. An actual serious announcement. Are you expecting? <laughs> yes. Beat me to it. Ag- uh, again. again. Yeah. To, uh, um, so to to the viewers of the intermission podcast, I need your help. Oh yes, I'm, yes, you do. I'm yes, like you do. I'm like uh, Uncle Sam. Right, yeah. I need you, not you, Reese. Um, there's uh, there's an online film festival called the Lift Off Film Festival. Um, you can pay. Fifteen pounds ish. It's USD converted to British pounds sterling, so it's very confusing. Um, to get a ticket, and then you get access to all 128 films that are in there, and you can watch uh, mine. Mine is in there. That's why I'm telling you, mine's in it. <laughs> and you can uh, you get a link to a voting platform, and you can vote for your two favorites. So watch them all. Uh, come up with a rational decision, and then just vote for mine anyway, please. Yeah, all three of Thank you, you right. minus me, because I'm just gonna be watching myself. Yeah. Go out there and vote for his <laughs> vote for his film. Thanks, everyone. Have you have you watched any of the others? No. <laughs> actually, no. I did actually. I, I started watching a couple. There's a lot of documentaries. Oh, interesting. Uh, um, Stephen Gibbs is in there. No, he isn't. Believe it or not. Um, I can't. There was also there was um what else was there? There was Dinosaur Land, which sounds like a dinosaur. Be... Oscar. 
but it sounded like it should be fucking sweet. And I cl oh, did you make an old joke? Sorry, I missed it. No, no, uh, it's Joe. Oh, has Joe, no, Joe's been asking all week just people what their favorite dinosaur is, and he keeps asking Oscar because Oscar won't tell him because he didn't have one. Well, yeah, because they were with your family back in the fucking day. <laughs> you can't pick between your fucking parents. So what was dinosaur? <laughs> Yeah, I'm Uncle I'm, Stu the I'm Stegosaurus. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you my mum you called her a dinosaur. No, that's not no, what I said. Yeah, yeah, that's not well, that's not what I said. No, that's not what I said. Mum! No. <laughs> what I was saying is because I, what I needed was a comparison thing of you can't pick between your family, but you usually say you can't pick between your kids, but you don't have kids that I know of. So I, I went for I went for parents you, instead. You and Joe. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it is. Who oh, am I? And, and, and you can pick between them. You just pick Joe. And I've, and I, and I've now apparently adopted Ruby as well, so that's awesome. Now. I thought you adopted Ellie no, a that's while fine. back. No, uh, me and Ellie are parents to Optimus Prime. Right. Yeah. And then you were Aoife well. were parents to Joe, and yeah. then she died in that tragic car accident. Yeah, we don't um, talk about that. <laughs> 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 uh... Uh, but yeah, vote for my movie, please. Yes, do that. I'll put the link Di in the description below for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, you Dinosaur Land. Festival. Yeah, it's in my Instagram bio. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Dinosaur Land sounded like it was going to be fucking sweet, and then I clicked on it. It was another documentary, so that was upsetting. About dinosaurs? No, I don't think so. Ah, oh, fuck. It's What's like the a, point? It's just like a, about like a place in Brazil or something. I was like, oh, okay. Uh... I was like, ah, fuck this, man. I wanted like a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, good on you. It looks well made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to do, do the Tyler tale? Oh. Here you go. You jumping right into it, are you? I was, I'm, yeah, I'm on it, man. Right. He's I on it. I was going to maybe discuss the fact that we've been filming, but that's okay. Oh, uh, no, you can do that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine, yeah, too. Pu pump your brakes, Robbie. Sorry, mate. I'm just by really excited. I'm, I'm quite proud of this one. Uh, time, I'm looking forward to by it. By the time this episode's out, we would have, we would have wrapped in the U. I, I, I hope so. I don't want to still be here next week when I, I should be in Bristol. Saturday still. Oh, the way it is out on Saturday. Oh, yeah. yeah That's yeah. fair. That's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, what, what are you going to Bristol for? I'm seeing my mate. Oh, you know, I've, I've got more than the ones up here. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, no, shocking. But I saw some of them. Yeah, you did. So I why, was, why would they do that? <laughs> what, be mates with them? Yeah. <laughs> hey, beats me. I don't think they have much choice. <laughs> oh, I'm joking, Reese. I think you're delightful. Oh, thanks, man. That's all right. Now I've got some for Nick. That wasn't from like filming, but that was from like being. Yeah, he was a silly boy, yeah, sat on the sun with no was sunscreen. Being, was being in the production meeting yesterday in the in the beer gardens. Where there was only four of us. Yeah. Nah, you you sh sh schmuck. Uh, yeah. No, but oh yeah, I, I have, I've had Leo shitting his brains out. Uh, our poor yeah, friend yeah, Leo, he's been that, stuck yeah. to the toilet God for the bless past him. two days. He, he, he was sending me Snapchats all day, not of the, <laughs> not of the stuff, but like, of him just sat on a toilet. And he was like, God bless him. He, he did say it was like it. The toilet. It, it was like it's this for like every ten minutes, man. I yeah. can't fucking move. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We've also put a hit out on uh, one Tyler. We're not talking about that. <laughs> We're not talking about that. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 gone well. It's gone well. I've I've yet to check back at what we said are the best takes. I'd see if oh, we yeah. are the best. Oh, takes. Robbie, I put a little surprise in there for you. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a funny yeah. one. Funny one you said. Um, <laughs> If, if, oh, no. if I can fucking see it. I was going to say, I told Robbie that. It's like, we're shooting on 4K. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's going to nah, no, like, blow up your hard drive. Nah, it's going to blow up your hard drive. Why the fuck would you do that? Who made that decision? Was it oh, we Oscar? made it. We made it executively. He, he suggested it to me, and I said, yeah, let's do it. No, <laughs> let's not fucking do it. Do you want to edit in? No, Switch I back to 1080. It's in 4K. Yeah, Switch well, we back to 1080 and start again. No. <laughs> No. Absolutely not. No, we're keeping 4K. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, sweet cheeks. Well, alone would use 4K, and that's not blowing up my computer. Yeah, but how oh, okay. is that? I might be alone fine. With you. Alone with you is also about, like, seven pages shorter than, right. the, uh, than the Muse. Okay. It'll be... I think it'll be fine, especially once it's in Avid and transcoded. Yeah. Then it'll be sound. But when I've transcoded that. it to, to when I've transcoded it to something that's not fucking awful, it's it's uh, pro it's pro pro res, not raw. Did it look? Yeah, it's not raw. Good. Did it look as okay, horrible as you feared good. it might? 
Uh, I haven't properly looked at everything yet, but like. Oh joy. No, this. It being it. The, the, the it being four K like... won't change that. No, 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 I mean, you know, no. It's not the fact that I thought it was. I, oh, all okay. these things where there's some. Sh you know, you know that. You know, how I get Robbie and there's some things. Ah, oh, I don't mm. know about this, and I have to like look at the footage. Yeah, you know when yeah. you try something new without you know testing it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's that kind of like. It's well, fucking gay. When you try something new without testing it. No, well, we, well, no a lot of the <laughs> shots I know anyway. Like, I know, like, no, 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 I'm talking more about the setting than the shots themselves. The set, well, we, we just thought we'd go for it. We didn't actually go, oh, let's see what it looks like first. The set? No, the set, 4K. Oh, the set, no, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, that's what I mean. I was a little bit like, oh, yeah, we haven't done this on the yeah. pocket cams. We've never <laughs> touched board. that 4K button in the two years that we've had the pockets. No. Was it the one year? Jesus Christ. Remember. Two, Get a gourd. Yeah. No, but no, I'm like, I'm. It, 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 there's some stuff in there where I'm like, oh, I'm really happy with that. Some stuff I'm like, I don't know, but like, we're getting enough coverage. We're, go cool. we're going to be getting enough coverage to where. Oh, you, know, you know the time of day time code that you've done? Yeah. yeah. Were they the same on both cameras or different? I made sure they were. You're a fucking. I mean, not, not as in like, were they both time of day time code? I mean, as in like, was the time the, that it was displayed? Yeah, I, made, I made them exactly the same. Love this guy. <laughs> oh, I made sure yes. I thought to myself, it's just like, I don't know the point in this. Yes. He's, he's asked for it, so I'll yeah, do it no for him. Knew the point. We're like, just do it. But I said, I'll do it. I, I gotta do it for oh, him. Oh, that's so dance, good. Because then I can I can sync them all. So, were you shooting two cameras yeah, at the same once. time at any point? Only, only uh, even once. one shot, yeah. For audio only yes. listeners, he did, he did the uh, the chef's kiss hand movement. Oh my god, this is gonna be no. so fucking good. I also made sure you Gary's did... Gary's clapper was in sight. I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Since, since, you... we didn't, oh, since we didn't have video the... today, Gary was on clapper. There was one instance where there was just Dude. a reflection on the clapper board. So then, like, Reese went, oh, Gary, just do that again. <laughs> oh. Reese. Dude, right. If if this. If, if the clapper board's in shot. If. Time of day, time code has been used properly. And what was the other thing I was going to say? Was that not oh, two, two, set, two camera setups? Yes. Then I'm going to have a fucking beautiful time. <laughs> have as many two camera setups as you like. As long as they press record around the same time, I can sync them on time code. Yeah. That should and be. then I, I can make a... I can make a multi-group, and then all I have to do is hold down shift and fucking do the arrows and just flip between them like a fucking vision mix. It's gonna be, it's stuff, gonna be beautiful. This is stuff that I'm happy is meaning a lot to you, Robbie, because I'm just. Oh like, uh, no, this is like this is the best shit you could I'm possibly do. I'm, I'm glad I could make your life easier. What I'm happy about. Thank, thank is you so I, much. What I'm happy about is when I go down to Leeds with the footage to spend like a weekend with him. It's not yeah. Really famous, oh. like, <laughs> no, it's not. If you send me the, uh, oh, can you send me the footage before you get here? You can, you can attempt. Oh, okay. You can attempt. I'm it just thinking, like, if you, if you, if you could, then um, I could start the ingest and have it all ingested by the time that you get there. I could try, but it might just have to be a postal thing again. What I did. <laughs> you know okay. What I mean? yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 That's fine. But no, it's Sweet. it's 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 good vibes. So yeah. Far. I think. So it, far. I mean, it's only day one. It's more so like I was stressed about like how much time we've got left. But uh, it was also very. I also noticed a nice work shift when we had Kyle on set to continuously go to us. Right. Yeah. You got this. Yeah, long. I'm really glad he was just like, right, yeah. you got this long. I was like, oh, thank yeah. God, at least someone's keeping track. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. have to keep yeah. asking people now. Yeah, exactly. So, and he's going to be there all yeah. day tomorrow. Oh. So we've got back in all of And that. hopefully, Leo oh. will have been able to pry himself off of that toilet. Yeah, we'll see. God speak to that, man. We'll I'm wishing him the best. Hope yeah, he can hydrate. Yeah. Exciting go, time. Exciting go time. well soon. I bet it was that double decker. Oh god! Yeah, I wonder what he's at. Yeah, it's probably that raw chicken. Oh no! What? I muted myself slightly, and then I forgot to turn it back up. I'll have to like do something. You oh. stupid bastard! <laughs> oh, well, just just boost it. Yeah. No, I like fully muted myself. I don't know how like well I'll I be. I mean, my one might piss it up. It might so. have done. Yeah. I might have to do some saucy things with the Skype audio, which that would be oh, oh, my. dreadful. Oh but my! I'll figure that oh, out. My. Hang on, let me time code that so I know when to look at. Yeah, just say like t 20 seconds before <sighs> that. Because that's one thing I want to be doing during this week is trying to fix my editing error. Oh, oh hell yeah. That's the dream. 
but yeah. <laughs> Um, I, do you okay. know what? Because I thought I'd be clever. It's like, oh, while I'm moving the mic around, I'll mute it for a bit, so you're not hearing. Yeah. It all. So you're not hearing the with it all. But then I was like, but I forgot to like turn it back. Hello. <laughs> you fucking idiots. All right. So go on then, Tyler Tale. This up. Is it Tyler Tale time? Okay. Can get I get a ref- can I get a refresher? Because I can't like. Yeah. Okay. So let's start it off. Um, let's go to the top here because I might need a refresher I'm as well. I'm so excited. Um, the team was in disarray at the beginning of the season. Yep. Uh, obviously, Reese came around, did the Valentine's Day massacre on Team Tyler, um, killing Sam, Ryan Tomlinson, and Ethan Strachan. Who just appeared in the puff of smoke. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tyler was brooding and wandering the streets, still as a nomad. Um, yep. Reese sent him a photo of the dead bodies, told him to suck it, biatch. Um... <laughs> Tyler said he doesn't know if he's ready, like, but he must seek forgiveness for what he nearly did. Uh, and he said it's time to see the big boss, right? That, that was the end of episode one. Right. Uh, Tal- in episode two, Tyler was walking the streets uh, again. Um, he went to the sandwich shop, which was owned by Rishi Sunak, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, who served him his favorite, which was the pickled onion sani with a sprinkling of gravy granules. And then Ellie... Cutmore, Joe Caslin, and Lewis, Team Lewis. Yeah. Ellie Cutmore, came, twin sister. Uh, came in. Um, team Lewis featuring Lewis, who's not on Team Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Um, Outstanding. Who, obviously, they upset Rishi, sent out his laser eyes, and then they went out. They ran out of the shop, and um, they went off to go and kick some pigeons and asked Tyler if he wanted to come along. I thought Tyler scream said, at them. Or something like that. Well, Rishi did. They went, no, no, they I, no went, I, I thought they were going to just scream at pigeons. I didn't think they were going to boot them. Oh, um, what were they going to do? Who knows? Um, leave, uh, it up to, leave it up to the viewer to decide what they did at that beach. Oh, no, yeah, sorry, no, they did go and shout at pigeons, sorry. Shout. Never mind. Um, Tyler said, no, I must continue my mission. He went off. Then we found Tyler on a train. Um, there was an old woman opposite him. Um, the old woman... Uh, passed away sadly <laughs> Ty- Tyler tried to resuscitate her to the point where he was just fucking booting her in the chest um, Rishi Sunak was there this is such a vision as well there was, a, there was a lot there was a lot of stuff going on there um, uh, the, the train conductor obviously kicked him off because he was kicking the shit out of an old dead woman <laughs> um, the, the woman then revealed herself to actually be Reese in a mask who was ah. going to get? Who was going to get to Leeds before Tyler, who had been dropped off in Selby, um, and was riding away? Tyler then, obviously, in episode four, was going fucking hell, this is bad, um, and was stopped I'm in his tracks. Uh, as as he was leaving the train station, was stopped by the police. Um, Matthew McConaughey, the sheriff of Selby, was there, of course. and um, and you know arrested. Well, it, Tyler started trying to pick a fight with him. Um, Matthew McConaughey shot him in the leg, and and um, <laughs> and uh, killed him. No, it didn't kill him. No, he didn't kill him. Took him to prison. Uh, back of the Fucking team, Robbie Campbell. Secure Tyler. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he shot him in the leg. Took him to prison. Back of the team, Robbie shot Camp. Uh, there was a fun- funeral happening for the fo- former soldiers. Uh, everyone was stood around sobbing. Uh, Leo gave a uh, a, a beautiful great, eulogy. What a great speech. Um, and uh, and Leo said, you know, it, 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 go see which one's the real ones for who was there because Lewis wasn't there, so he's a bit of a prick. Um, and that was the end of that. So now we're on episode five, if you're ready. Ah, oh, I am on the edge of my seat. Here we go. Hit the music. Uh, if I remember. Yeah. T- yeah, if you, I don't know, you don't have to. Tyler sits alone in his cold, hard prison cell. No Red Cook Cricket Club sleeping bag in sight. Fuck, man. Where's the justice? Uh, he thinks to himself as he spins the revolver he stole from the Sheriff McConaughey on his rounds the night before. <laughs> Look, luckily, Tyler's been able to hide all sorts in the bullet hole in his leg, like a solved, Rub- <laughs> like a solved Rubik's Cube and a small family of mice. Um, from the bullet hole, he pulls his favourite Subway order, which, of course, is a meatball marinara with gravy on a flatbread. Um... Mm-mm, footin mm. <laughs> he says as he goes to take a big bite. <laughs> someone, someone approaches the uh, cell door. You gonna share that, you big kabukas? Ting! It's Sheriff McConaughey, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah. 
Uh, Tyler goes, not with you, you filthy footin' pig. Uh... <laughs> With that, Sheriff McConaughey is obviously very upset. He, he throws open the door to Tyler Sell and gets ready for a pounding. Uh, <laughs> you want another hole in that leg, boy? <laughs> Actually, it's been very convenient, like. <laughs> With the high-pitched squawk of a Yorkshire muck dove, Tyler calls the <laughs> Tyler calls the family of mice, which call up into McConaughey's snoz and start to burrow into his head. Tyler sprints away. Sheriff Woody, Sheriff Woody. With that, Woody Harrelson barrels in. Oh, Get out. <laughs> Running after Tyler, who's now gathering his very few personal items. Woody catches up with him now. Stop there, boy. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it if you'd cooperate. I don't really like doing this job. It's just something Maddie says we should do as a brotherly bond in time. I'm not even sure he's really my brother. He just wouldn't leave me alone one day. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, you were in Venom too, you sad bastard. <laughs> now, <laughs> now that's it. <laughs> Ting. Um, Woody whistles, and from his locker comes Lung Crush, his trusty steed. <laughs> Tyler flings his red cricket club sleeping bag slash poncho at Woody like Batman's cape, and uses the distraction to mount Lung Crush. And ride away. Oh my god. Uh, before long, he's caught up with the train to Leeds. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Reese is doing wanker signs at him through the window. <laughs> what? Where are you going with that? <laughs> wanker! <laughs> wanker! He shouts. <laughs> oh. I've, got to, I've got to stop this train, Lake. Jesus but, oh, they, Christ. But oh dear, he's being followed by Sheriff McConaughey, who is riding Woody like a bucking bronco <laughs> after Tyler. I'm gonna get you, boy! Ting. The book is following them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, that was in my eye, you fucking dickhead! <laughs> Here we foot in Gull Lake. Tyler speeds up, bringing him neck and neck with the train. He calms himself. Is he going to do the unthinkable? In his head, he goes. For Robbie Lake. He, co he commits, and Lung Crush makes a sharp turn and dives across the front of the train. McConaughey and Harrelson, <laughs> Harrelson follow. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they, they are struck by the train and blown to smithereens by the locomotive, <laughs> which grinds to a sudden stop. That's enough of that, Lake. I think I'll be getting to Leeds first. <laughs> Ting! And he rides off into the sunset. Ah. Uh. Further towards Leeds. I thought you said this was going to be the filler. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I I, I, I lied. <laughs> nice. T turns out it was an action-packed episode. So we got. So, so next week is the mid-season finale, and that's going to be even more mental, is it? This, uh, the the next one is the big one. Oh, I'm disappointed the, I miss it, but this was still a, what a ride. Fa thanks, man. There's been some stuff that's been building and brewing for a long time, ready for a twist. I don't know if anyone's picked up on yet. No, I think. Well, I think Reese has. I I might have. Reese thinks he. Oh, okay. I'll speak to you afterwards. Right. Yeah, we'll we'll, so, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll 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 talk about after we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Good shit, that. Yeah. Good shit, that. Yeah, Robert. there you go. It continues. Um, again, we we always ask every week if someone could make an anime of it. Please. Yeah. And Please. anything that would be that would be fantastic. Stickmen, for Christ's sake. Once all, yeah, once, once, all, once all these really busy people who are doing the degrees show once they've got that out of the way with maybe they can yeah. maybe do that. That would be yeah, really possibly. funny. Oh, me, am I? That'd be really good. I thought we weren't talking about uh, this. I said no, but it is a really busy time for them. They, and once they're done finishing their really busy things, they can do this, which won't be really busy for them. Oh, me, oh, my. Well, no, it is. It is. Remember how busy we were? Remember how busy we were in that time? I'm sensing um, still. We were so, in so incredibly busy. So incredibly busy. Yeah, you know, get, getting Mackies, getting angry at each other, and then going and watching Kenobi. We did do that. Yeah. yeah, we went back and watched the first two episodes of Kenobi. Yeah. How good it looked yeah. at the time, and then it was fine. Oh, what, what, we, what we were given. It was okay at the time. She, Jesus. Just yeah. take a moment. Alright, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> moment over. So, so, <laughs> so, Robbie, that leads us on to uh, the negative letterbox section. Oh, of course it does. Yeah, obviously. Oh, I deny it. This is okay. where I normally turn the intermission off. Well, so I'm excited it. to see what this uh, is. Oh shit! You're so, excited to see what it is. Yeah. 
So, for those I'm excited to see the letterbox area. Like I've never. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. For, so for those who I didn't know you liked her. You can shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can shut. <laughs> this guy thinks he's funny. He is funny. He's pretty funny. Thanks, nice Ben. Funny looking. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right, you, can't talk, ah. oh. you can't talk about jokes, Robbie. When you're the one Why? in the back of my car talking yeah. about the shittest of jokes. No, they're really kind of funny. They were good. They were pretty good. Your only audi- your only pleased audience member was Reese Bruce. Yeah, but it's not gonna be my girlfriend, is it? And it's not gonna be you. Oh Anna. Don't forget <laughs> Anna. Well, Anna, 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 Anna. Anna Anna probably couldn't hear me. <laughs> no, she wasn't she wasn't a fan, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say. Oh, shit, man. I can oh. repeat them here if you'd like. I don't want that. Um, I mean and so the for for those who are new to this segment, Reese, yeah. uh, this is where we go to the uh, the website Letterboxd and we go to the film that we talked about in this episode, and then we go to the negative reviews of it and Holy we read them out. Shit. And it's because sometimes they're funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, so funny. When I got that from the title. Of this. Wow. <laughs> and some, sometimes they're funny. Sometimes we get some bangers. We had a uh, in yeah. the Apocalypse Now review. Yeah. There was one negative review that had a. It was half a star. Too much jungle. Mm. Mm. There was uh, in the Insightful. Godfather one. There was a half a star one that said, "Not good mustaches." Yeah, yeah, I, I can that get behind a, that. And that uh, what, one. one of my favorite ones, and this is one yeah. I will forever. This might be my favorite one because it's always stuck in my head. Although we've had mm. thought, we have had many other ones that have made us really howl laughing. But in the Spirited Away one, yeah, there was someone that rated the film half a star that said they didn't watch the film at this point, but their next door neighbor was blaster film really loudly while having sex and then at the end of the film th- he could just hear one person go was that Chinese it's pretty good that's fantastic <laughs> oh. for this segment keep the people entertained for this segment I'm going to get some bickies you're going to get some bickies I just want a bicky keep what's your favourite bicky um, lotus biscoff bickies what's your favourite bicky Reese? I don't eat bicky you don't eat bicky no. you don't eat bicky you don't eat bicky Oh, hang on. You mean it's like a brand. No, no, um, no, I mean, like biscuits. Like, what a little bicky. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know your northern lingo. Uh, mm, i got to go with dark chocolate digestive. A dark chocolate, a dark chocolate yeah, digestive. It's got to be a dark chocolate one. Yeah, I can, I can, man, I can get behind that. That's mm. good shit. I used to really fucking like the caramel digestives. Why haven't I had them in so long? Oh, I haven't had them in years. They're, they're, they are good on the odd occasion, I'll have a hobnob. Hobnob, yeah. You're gonna get mm. kind of the, the caramel digestives are good tea dunking biscuits. Mm. Yeah, you fair. dunk and then the caramel melts within what, the chocolate. Do you, do you know what? Do you, do you know what the best um, biscuit for dunking is? Dunking custard cream. Yeah. Uh, really? Mm. Yeah. It, it, mate, it, hold, it holds its integrity more than any other biscuit. I mean, like statistically, it's the best dunking biscuit. I don't mean it tastes the best. Right. I like a Twix because you can do a fun thing yeah. with a Twix. Yeah. Oh, you can make a straw. You can. You I've never done that, that but um, I, I have heard that, but I've never done it. Hang on. Am I? Yeah, I, sorry. I'm constantly moving. I'm causing issues with this. I was going to say, because the way that Skype does it, it's like, it cuts like, we go basically. Yeah, like, I'm trying to keep myself, I'm looking in that Someone in the Senate, to yeah. Myself there. yeah. Have, you got, have you got your bicky, Robbie? I've got four of them, mate. Oh, yeah. wow. All right. You gotta sit down and prepare yourself for this, Robbie. The, do you think bicky. we'll get, uh, we'll see if we get some funny ones. This season hasn't given us, given us a Hall of Famer yet been disappointed no. what you mean we have a hall of fame with yeah. how funny we no, think so we yeah. Yeah. modern film reviewing podcast intermission hasn't found a good review no this the fucking no come on hey. I know what you're saying I've just been mean whoa, whoa. Reese said to us well, one Reese said to us we should look in again at TikTok for the intermission I suggested that more for promotion mm. which I get it but also I don't want to operate idea. it I, mean, I don't want to operate no, it fair enough um and also, I'm not gonna fucking do it. And that's what I mean. So who the fuck else is gonna do it? No, fair enough. And then also too, he said that we should maybe consider reviewing newer films. And I'm like, well, that defeats I mean, the purpose now, of the podcast. I mean, just now and then. It defeats the purpose. I agree. Yeah, so he gets me. No, but like, what's the? What, that's the whole. That's the point of the podcast. No, I mean, I mean, for like it's, specials, it's, like when you got big ones, like super, like the, when the Batman that was big, you should have done that. But like, I feel like that's thing. just like falling into a certain system then. You know what I mean? It's like the, but it's like, but what if like we throw in like I don't know uh, an Ant Man? I don't give a fuck about Ant Man. I'm not talking about shit like that. 
So I don't get, I don't give a fuck about the red shoes. <laughs> no, but that's but the main, a, but that's but the main but influence for the muse, Robbie. <clears throat> All right, fine. Eight, um, I'll give you one in a break of a season. We'll review the newest modern film, and I'll show you how shit it would be from my end. Okay. Oh yeah, great. Another MCU film, right? I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying. Oh. Hey. Oh, that, what have you done, like John oh. Wick or something? Like that? that was a sensational film. Yeah, John Wick's class. James yeah, Wick. see, that's what I mean. Like something like that. I don't mm. mean like the run of the mill Marvel. Mill. But I then I feel I don't know the motivation would die for me because then we're just another movie podcast. No, I get that. But that's how I say you don't do it often. You do it when there's something like huge. Mm. No, no. Like currently, mm. you could do Spider Verse because that's going to be insane. No, no. Mm. But I don't know. I, but then I don't enjoy those. Doing talking about oh, those stuff. I'm, I'm, I, personally, I was just personally. giving ideas. No, I, I don't understand the, the the point with it, but also it eliminates the whole point of the podcast. You know what I mean? Oh, I feel that one. Hang on, we'll, we'll get to it. So let's get to it. Sorry, right. I'm jumping ahead on the reviews. Joe did the same thing. Uh, Joe started laughing at reviews. Stop! We haven't got to it yet. Right. Nice. <clears throat> Half a star. I hated this. It was the most bored I've ever been by a movie. I didn't care at all about the story or the characters. I was pretty quickly just waiting for it to end. I guess I could see someone liking this since it's regarded as a classic and all, but it absolutely wasn't for me. And that's by Robbie Tweedale. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to say, was that me? Why didn't you Did just uh, turn it off, Dylan? Right, come on, Dylan. What are you doing? Yeah, I know. Mm. Right. Robbie can't. He needed to talk about the film. But Dylan, what's your excuse? Mm. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not watching this film. That's no point. Spoiled for me. Well, it's, it says there. It's yeah, no. Big, it's it's half a star. Yeah. Ginger girl danced, then killed herself. The end. Did you see? Um, did you get the link this week? For what? Which link? Was obviously, I... every every week in the Tyler Tale. Oh, because there's the been train. a link to the films. There's been a link to the film that we talked about. Oh. Obviously, this this week's link has been Woody Harrelson and Sheriff McConaughey were hit by a car. Not a car, a train. Okay. I w- I was hoping for the um. The link of uh, Tyler does an 18 minute dance. Tyler does an 18 minute ballet would have been good. That would have been a funny one. That would have been a nice mm. one. Um, yeah, that'd be enjoyable. Well, I'm not reading this one. It's too big. It doesn't look entertaining. I can, I can read it if you want. No, all right. Go on, Reese. You read this one. <coughs> Half a star. I went into this one under the impression that Powell and that Pressburger's work was not my cup of tea. The red shoes did nothing to dissuade me of that notion. Okay, here we go. The film follows Victoria Page, I'm not reading all those names, and, the, and her rise to become the star of Boris Lerm- Lerm's uh, ballet, seemingly entirely on the basis of her being attractive. Pre- uh, whatever his name is, preaches that uh, one can love the ballet or other people, but not both, and is thus forced to cast aside his previous prima ballerina when she gets married. He probably asserts it's... Uh, paternalistic? Pro- yeah, it's paternalistic jealousy over here that... That sentence doesn't make sense. Leading to the outrage when he discovers that she's been seeing his composer. A large portion of the middle of the film is given over to the surreal ballet performance, which, much like the Stargate sequences of 2001 A Space Odyssey, is a spectacular feast, nice one, of visual effects. Although some of the jump cuts hold up much less well, which nonetheless drags on for way too long with really no narrative significance. That's incorrect. I know. What did I say? This guy gets me. Oh, that's actually a genuine review. The the eighteen minute long play sequence adds nothing apart adds from everything. the fact that learning that the play went well. It adds that could have literally the film. It adds fucking everything it to it. It it could have been we're about to go on stage. Hard cut to we're coming off stage. No, that went well, guys. No, boring, boring, the, boring. No, would have boring. the same thing. But it would have been cooler. Can I make a film suggestion? Because I feel like he'd hate it. Uh, yeah, go on. I mean, it's been a thing that we've talked about maybe as a possibility. Oh, go what, on. What did he say? Breathless. I haven't seen that. It's such a shit film. I like it a lot, but I know he wouldn't. That's why. Wait, I have, I seen, have I seen Breathless? What's jo- it about? It's Jean-Luc a French Godard. film. Yeah, it's a French film. From. Did you study an uh, yeah, do, do, yeah, does he. Does, um, does that guy attack a woman and then run after her in the street? He doesn't attack her, but he runs down the street for like ten minutes and then falls at a clear <laughs> point where he was told to fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 that, yeah, that fucking sucks. <laughs> That's what I mean. Done. We did it. It's fine. Nah, damn. Boom. Yeah. I like it a lot. It's great. Robbie doesn't. You yeah. would. It's, uh, yeah, and you and you would like don't look up. Half a star. They stole the red shoes from the Lizard of Oz. The Lizard of Oz. The yeah. Lizard of Oz. 
Whoa. I've watched that movie. The Lizard of Oz. Yeah. Um, Half a star, objectively hot garbage. Mm-hmm. I forgot what Robbie's liking these. Right. Um, I'm having a great I, time. I agree with the end of this one. No, go on. No, we haven't got it yet. Yeah, don't worry. Um, Reese can read that one. Right. Um, yeah. Half a star. What a sack of shit. I have no idea how this is a classic. I wish I were dead. No, this is the one I agreed with. Oh, is that what you mean? Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's me too, yeah. Yeah, holy shit. Um, half a what star. A shit. Half a star, another movie uh, Another movie about another crazy bitch. Uh, I don't Yikes. know about that. Mm. Mm. Yikes, indeed. That's a bit much. Um, half a star, fell asleep in it when I was a kid. Tried to watch it on TCM as an adult. Fell asleep after five minutes. Arty farty to the max. Sounds I mean, like yeah, you just got poor you... attention span. Yeah, and why did you try and watch this as a kid? It's a really odd it, one to watch as a kid, isn't it? It's a really odd one. A, ki- a, a kid's getting nothing out of this. <laughs> Absolutely. <fuck off>. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm getting nothing out of this at 22, a child is getting fucking That one's going to need translation, I think. Um, half a star. Not enough shoes, except more red shoes. Expected. Ate it. Expected more uh, red shoes. Expected more red thing shoes. Is they were... Thing is, they were trying to be they were trying to be funny with that, yeah, and that one for me. It didn't. It was trying too hard to get yeah, into that, the whole. That of review game. didn't get any likes, I don't think. And now uh, yeah. you you finish off Reese with the final half a star review. <coughs> Go on, lad. And that was the negative letterbox reviews for the red. That shoes. is perfect, Reese. That was amazing. Thank you. We don't have a. We, there's no Hall of Famer. There's no one. Nah, no. Nah. Much nah, like the movie. That. And with that being said, Robbie, we'll we'll swivel, we'll we'll pirouette our way to the outro. Yeah, shall, shall we? <laughs> Go on. Right. So next week, Robbie. Yeah, man. The next one we're going to be talk about is not going to have Reese Bruce here with us. Um, oh, what the I'm fuck? What's the, what's the point? Yeah. Uh, sorry, man. Uh, but this one, uh, along with the epic mid-season finale of the Tyler Tales, everyone. Uh, I can't wait. I I won't be here, but I'll be here. Okay. Nice. You've been, you've been in every episode of the Tyler Tales yep. so far. Yeah. Um, mm. How do you feel about blowing up in the train? I mean, I, I've got a feeling I'm not dead. I, I can guarantee you. I'm just not an, dead. I'm, I don't know any yeah. information, but God, I can guarantee yeah. you you're not dead. I'm gonna come out of that like Darth Vader and Rebels. I was, I was imagining <laughs> like, I was imagining like Michael Myers at the beginning of Halloween Kills in that burning house. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, stands and he's got like, like chainsaws grinding on firefighters' faces. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it would be like that. Oh, yeah. I picture myself the Tyler looking off into the darkness and then, I don't know, I don't Ripping know, a man's I throat out. Excalibur or something. Like and something then... like that. That's what I imagine. Mm. But anyway, next week's episode, uh, we'll go, we, we're going to a Billy Wilder film, Robbie. We're going to be oh, talking about yeah. uh, a Billy Wilder film. He looks so ecstatic. We, uh, well, no, he, no, he liked, he liked, he liked uh, both of his films. He was incorrect in one of them. He liked... He liked the he likes he eventually liked some like it hot and he also liked the seven year itch. I did which like the seven year itch. Which was incorrect. Man, that sounds inconvenient. They sort of scratched it a bit sooner. Seven year itch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now this next episode we're gonna be <laughs> next week's episode we're gonna be talking about uh, the apartment. Uh, that's, that's gonna be next week's episode. So yeah, cool. get to it. It's one of my it's, that's one of my all time faves. That one. Love What's that it one. on? What what can I watch it on? And don't tell me to pirate it. <laughs> I don't if you, if you, you say anything, if you say it's on the fucking BFI player, I'm gonna kill you in your sleep. It's uh, that, that's translation. It's on YouTube. You can rent it on YouTube. Fuck why me. He, why would he? Why would I he don't want to spend money on this? It's on. Do you have Apple TV? No, it's, uh, no. It's a rented on Apple TV. Oh. You don't watch. Godspeed. So yeah. piracy oh. is find it. Hey, I don't promote the piracy. No, no, I do. I do. I would never. I would never pirate a film. He would never. Unless I was being forced to watch it for a podcast. Don't piracy. Pirate the music. Yeah. Well, that's fucking crazy. Anyway, that, anyway the yeah. part. <laughs> oh, you know, it's also, I've also got my, it's also my Blu-ray shelf, so I know, come up, Robbie. <laughs> well. Yeah, watch it before his birthday. Jesus. I don't, I don't know why you don't just give him these discs. I can't give him everything, can I? Well, if you've got the ones planned out, it's like, here, I own them. You know, the ones you can't find anywhere yeah, else I on the planet. Yeah, I need them as well. I feel like you've already seen it there in the back. No, but I need to watch them to before the fucking podcast, don't I? I can't just, you know, I need to like watch it with the mindset of like talking about it. These systems so, are fucking yeah. broken. <laughs> no, they're not. I'm trying to fight you, battle. They're not. 
Well, it's not about that. You can never win. Uh, it's uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe the season five ends with us just canceling the podcast. <laughs> yeah, maybe it just ends with that. Maybe it just goes in the maybe, fucking bin. <laughs> maybe I'm done with it. Maybe I'm sick of your shit, Robbie. Maybe that's how it ends. Just, I'm like, right, you know we're what? We're done with this. Points in a second. Let's slow, let's slow it down. Maybe here, we're done with this. Maybe we're done with this. <laughs> oh, blue. Oh, train starts so week. I can't wait. So I'm stuck up here. You are. <laughs> train strikes next week. I can't wait. Oh, that's a bit oh funny. shit, son. Wait, London. Getting back to London on so Sunday. Ma- so maybe be... Reese's were here again. Yeah, maybe I will. Be. Maybe, oh, he will maybe he will be. Maybe he will be. That'd be nice. episode. Yeah, maybe I'll just oh. never see my home again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you maybe you're stuck here forever. Who knows? Yeah, with you know a week's worth of clothes. Well, so, oh, Jesus. That, that's funny. Yeah. But anyway, that's 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 been this episode of the admission. Um, we had a good bicker. That was probably entertaining for all of you lot. Uh, during, yeah, I love during the, the four of you. Film. We we got a, we got a magical Reese Bruce appearance. Always um, nice. We're gonna we're gonna uh, sign off. We're gonna say goodbye, and then we're gonna talk gossip. Um, Hell yeah, because that's how that works. Uh, so to things that can't be said on the podcast. So till next time, everyone. Sign us off, Robbie. Wow.